percent chance of actually securing this, and that is still above many other teams on Inferno. Yeah. Lick would have a fantastic Inferno. One of the only Infernos I would say is not overrated, and even though it is lesser played right now, they might come in fresh and who knows, uh, be able to take uh, Astralis to the later rounds, if not the end. But the one thing I would say is if it does come to, to those later rounds, you just hope that they aren't surprised and are more ready to take that opportunity as opposed yeah. to think about map three too early. Right, with the pressure being off, you know, they may find themselves in a better position than they really do expect. <laughs> uh, you don't need to practice Inferno to do that. That's true, yeah. Hell of a headshot. That's See you later, device. You know. Nitro, dual Berettas. Two guns better than one, but, uh, well, he's damaged early. Normally, when he goes into this buy, he actually plays top banana, and he'll he'll play behind half wall with somebody supporting him closer towards CT cross. One of the big one of the biggest issues for Team Liquid when they played against Ents was it was basically Stewie and Naf took turns dying um, whenever it was going to be like a B hit. Uh, yeah, and that was that was it. Ents kept controlling banana, kept killing one of the two, putting the other in an awkward situation. They get one kill versus a B exec with two ready to defend. So if that's a problem they can solve, that's going to be a big way that they can look good on Inferno. Bro, Nitro's got Berettas, and he's gonna have three players running straight at him. Now, he is tagged low, so maybe he gets swept under the rug immediately. Maybe he just rattles off all these shots. There's a lot of bullets in those mags. There's a lot of players towards this A-site. Twist and Elise here to support the defense, but Twist gets blinded by the flash as he holds off Graveyard. Nitro cleared immediately. So those Berettas not a threat. Dupree, in fact, clearing Twists, leaves just the liege within the site. Now, fly late rotation, 2v4. Excellent execution here from Astralis. They just strangled Liquid out of the site. Yeah, a very common pistol strat that they love to do. There's not a lot you can do about it. They're executing through a smoke. You know that they're in holes, but you've got nothing that can wall bang them. You're low on utility, so you can't molly them out or throw these like high, high concentration HU grenades into that long haul area. And so you, you've just got to wait for them to come out, and it can be kind of messy for, for them to jump out of the smoke. You don't know which directions they're going to go, although they are, they are kind of calculated. Like, there is method to the madness there. Um, but Zipix, as we saw, like just coming out, running along the railing, and then shooting in that direction just in case. Yep. And because Nitro was so low, he dies. I mean, there's not much else to it. He didn't have to know that he was there to realize that it cost me nothing to shoot a few bullets on an assumption, on a hunch, and it, it ends up being the correct decision. So there it is, Stewie and Naf end up saving in that previous map. Liquid did win the first pistol that was that was help, that helped them prop up their side. And in a situation like this, where they already don't feel as confident on the map, you know, pistols are also gonna be at, at extremely pertinent win conditions. Although the imp impact of pistols has been lessened quite significantly a couple updates ago. So uh, at the moment, I believe we've got uh, we've got to pause. Just everyone holding on for a second, um, and they're going to talk about things. Little mouse problem for Dupree yet again. Yeah. For the record, a liege, nice guy, offers to restart pistol. Estrella says, nay, nay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, an absolute gentleman. I mean, the most charitable player that I've ever I've ever heard speak. Here we have it. Dupree just popping heads. Yeah, a little. A little excitement out of device, but not too much. Get the rust off, get the confidence back. Not get back in much. the game. And uh, yeah, they're still um, kind of maybe looking for looking for a mouse replacement in case they uh, in case that their mouse is going to continue to be on the fritz. No problem. We'll get back into the game soon. And you and I both use wireless mice, correct? Yeah, but have I you, still use a mouse bungee. Have you tried? <laughs> What's attached to it? It's just there for, for your confidence sake. I'm like an old man in that way. Yeah. It's just sitting there behind my mouse pad. Um, not going to mention any brands, obviously, but uh, it's a great mouse bungee. I like how it looks, too. It's kind of aesthetic, but it's, it is a little weird that it's just sitting there. I was going to say, have you gone back to having to use a wired mouse at all ever since? To me, going from wireless back to wired is the same as going from 144 hertz back to 60. No, but I do have wired AirPods. Uh, those are just... And I'm also an old man for that regular headphones, right? And they work amazing. Well, they're not headphones, actually. They're earbuds. What do uh, I know? Yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, wi yeah, wireless is great. Wireless is great. There's a... Okay, and, controversial opinion. Go for it. Wireless keyboards are useless. Um, yeah, but what if you're like in your bed eating chips and you want to have it on your lap while you watch some episodes of The Sopranos? That seems oddly specific. Well, do I, you wouldn't, have I wouldn't know who would ever do that, you know? Um, <laughs> But also, I'd see that as a very common scenario. I think many people would actually partake in. Uh, I don't have a wireless keyboard, so it wasn't me. I just feel like, you know, you don't move your keyboard, so why does it need to be wireless, right? Yeah. You know, it's not like you're, it's not rolling around like a mouse would. 
Yes. You ever so had a, I'm just a critic. You ever had a, one of your peripherals go out of whack and then you had to figure out how to do everything with one or the other? Like how to log in to Windows with just your mouse or to, to do everything with your with no, your I've got, board? I've got pristine computer performance. Oh, yeah. Okay? You're no super issues. clean, super hygienic. You yeah. take care of everything. We get it, OK? Yeah. I'm not eating chips in bed. OK. My mouse, Whoa. keyboard, Chill, watching right? Sopranos. I, I, I don't drop any crumbs. No, I bet you suck them up after. <laughs> like, a, like a little vacuum yeah, cleaner in the right. sheets. Um, yeah, that's what they call me, a vacuum cleaner in the sheets. <laughs> uh, yeah, OK. So uh, hopefully the mouse can get replaced soon so we can spare you the banter. Um, sucks that there, we haven't gotten farther ahead than just a pistol. Right. But there is talk about. There is there is a ton to talk about just without like the uh, the actual context of this match. Yeah. Um, for 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 Astralis. Uh, let's like like for example, what what are Liquid going up against when they're facing Astralis? Uh, I mean, you're you're talking about one of the, the the most legendary rosters arguably in all of Counter Strike, right? True. Yeah. There's there's only. No, no, no player, no team has ever won four majors. Okay. The core of Astralis have now won three. Okay. Right. So that puts them on par with the old, uh, the old uh, MIBR slash SK roster. Um, what else have they done? I mean, we've got we've got a little sheet here. This is this is the Astralis stats and fun facts brought to you by one Dust Moray. That's right. Uh, let's see. Don't pronounce the T Moray. No, that's that's a that's the trap. Let's see. In the 18 events Astralis has attended, Device has won seven HLTV MVP awards. Seven. Dupree has won a single HLTV MVP award. A whole award. one. Magisk has won two. Zipix was close. 200% increase. At the major. Zipix was close at the major, but didn't quite get it. Um, would you agree in the fact that Astralis just have the best map pool in all Counter-Strike? Yes. 100%. By far. That's unarguable. No, I mean. I mean, Nuke, just ridiculous win streak. Inferno, the odds so far in their favor. And like, like we said, right, Dust2 is like the, the map that teams are trying to play against them, and even their win ratio there is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, you'd think that maybe this weekend they would have lost a couple, but no. They lost rounds on it. Nothing, nothing, never anything further. Yeah. Mohan. So we look at the, the the other impressive part about the Inferno that's not as talked about as often is the fact that they have the most amount of wins on the most competitive map in CSGO. Right. Inferno. It is played by every Tier 1 team. You ban Inferno, you are a moron. I mean, you have to be able to you have to be able to play it to some level, especially at the tier one. And it is it, and, and the fact that they are able to have a win streak on that map in specific. You know, Nuke is a very very strange map for teams to focus on, especially if they've got a roster that's only been around for four to six months. You know, they might not adopt Nuke unless they have all of their players like Love It, for example. It's a map you keep as like your fifth or sixth map yeah. most of the time. And Astralis can have that to like screw you over because you know that you're forced to ban it versus them. But then they have Inferno, which is a map, the most competitive map, a map that everyone knows inside out, a map that was literally played. I don't even know, what are the, st there's incredible stats on how many times Inferno was played at multiple majors, especially this new iteration of the map, which is one of the best maps, first of all, that uh, that Valve have put out as a new iteration, like that, that has barely had to be, had to have been changed since they re-released it. Hit the ground running, looks beautiful, plays wonderfully. Um, and has survived all of the slight nuanced meta changes that we've seen. Yep, um, that's a fair point. Yeah, and it's just, uh, and it's, and again, a map that people really understand, especially the best teams in the world. So to, to have the streak on this map is almost as impressive, if not even more impressive, than the nuke one, in my opinion. You know what's also impressive, Mohan? That Astralis led 2018 in almost all team categories, and they okay. still are here in the current year. You know, this includes the round win percentage with a note for a special CT side, success in opening duels, highest 5v4 conversion rate, highest 4v5 conversion rate. Insane. And that's something that you said, obviously, like, if you're going to win championships, not only do you have to make sure that you're always winning your 5v4 advantages, but you always need a little 4v5 or two here and there. You could be playing a totally competent team, but those, some of those wins are versus totally competent teams. Correct. Ultimately, you are at a disadvantage in a 4v5, but you've got to be able to win those once in a while to be able to be you know, that consistent at majors, etc. I mean, they're low percentage rounds, but they still have to happen. And you can make a, a really good team look dumb if you are smart enough and are greater than the sum of your parts with the remaining members of your team when you're at a disadvantage. And I think one of the more impressive stats, too, with Astralis is just their amount of utility damage, right? Like, this is a common conversation now where it's just like they have completely redone utility usage in Counter-Strike. They, they took it to a whole new level, and I think that teams are now having, like, it's a mandatory aspect of your gameplay that you have to in, uh, in, uh, include if which you're going to take the is, best off Which them. is so funny, right? It's like, 
you know, that was there the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know uh, it, it's, it's, it's not reinventing the wheel point. to be, yeah. you know, good with HE grenades. But uh, figuring out how to make the most of them is, is definitely one of the but, things that, that brought on the Astralis era. I, I would say that, that me personally, and I think it's relative to this event because they were finishing this in third place, I think Entz is one of the teams who has impressed me the most in terms of trying to replicate what Astralis has done with utility damage. Mm -hmm. uh, their grenades are as well on point. And I think it's because Entz and Astralis play a similar brand of Counter-Strike in a way. Um, and, and with that in mind, I'd hope that going forward we see just more and more teams like this because yeah. you're not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. But if everybody gets a new set of wheels, all of a sudden the whole town's decked out. Right. I'm talking yeah. mags. And then you're riding dirty. Spinners. Yeah, exactly. Riding nerdy. Um, yeah, riding nerdy. Yeah, that's your, that'll be your new, you can start an orc, call it riding nerdy. That would be good. What do you think about that? Well, yeah, I, you, there's look of, like slight disgust well, on your it's face. Because so. I know you don't like Weird Al, but you know, white, Weird Al is uh, it's white and nerdy. Riding dirty, white oh, and nerdy. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. So I've, I've heard of it. So you know, in the trivia department, I would have been able to I'm not keep for up copy, with you, right? no problem. But, but let's uh, let's, yeah. let's go. We survived. Wait, okay. Can we pause the game. I want to banter some more. You know, let's just uh, no. let's hold it back for another ten minutes. Just kidding, guys. We're gonna go right back into this. One O for Astralis, and um, it's uh, Liquid, I guess, on the back of it. If you can you can say it that way already. Three players stacked up on the left side of mid, depending on whose perspective you're thinking about. And uh, Astralis just working on slowly engulfing the halls in flames as they work on flushing anybody out in case they want to get into it, or, you know, in case they just want to shy people away from it and make them think they're getting into it. Arch control has now been taken, and Stewie is the first line of defense. He's not going to overcommit to this. Stu blocks him off with the smoke. They will linger near it. But no commitments made. In fact, they're going to rotate back away. Rotation heavy. Smoke's yeah. going to dissipate soon. Might be good timing for Astralis. Did they, did, was a second one popped? By the by the CTs there. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Yes, sir, it was. Find out. Yeah, there it is. So, Nafly. Good timing. Yeah. You're going to see Nitro and Stewie actually this get into big. position. Yep. And and they're reclaiming halls to make sure the straws aren't there. So, yep. there's three players now perusing their way over to B. This is not going to be an easy anti eco, folks. Sipex could even get caught towards mid. Bomb's going to double back once more. Magisk comes towards it. Ali, she's going to hear all this footsteps above him, but at what point does he strike? Because he wants to kill these players, but the ones behind him could easily take him just like that. Oh, he just gets mowed down. Twist is back towards Pit, has the high road, has the first kill. And a dink on top of it, but Magic still bests him. Glaive towards Archside. Going to serve as a flank around Stewie. Nafly caught by Device, doesn't clear his corners, and Nitro's been heard. So an unfortunate turn of events here for Team Liquid. They did have some positioning, but I feel like it all begins to unravel when Elise gets caught in the Dude, tunnel. That is a crazy rotate for Astralis to make. They had to be absolutely certain that they're, that the jig was up. Once that smoke boomed in their face, you think, oh my god, and they're going to go for the knife. Oh, oh my god, they're just, there's no honor here. They go for a stab apiece, and then it's back to guns. But who's going to win? Stewie or Glaive? It looks like Glaive, just by the skin of his teeth, an extra 10 health, and he's elated. Probably very good place to be in right now. A funny attempt there with the left click, just to alarm him. Okay, pull your sword out, brother. Uh, but uh, that was an incredibly difficult decision for Elish to make. He hears that many footsteps going over, but he can't actually get confirmation on the ones that have passed or how many have already passed, if there have been. So he tries to find a good timing. He could have waited, you know, until he was confident about five, but sometimes that would have been too long and he would have looked equally as dumb. So you can't blame him for popping his head out there. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah. So it was, it was a pretty good attempt, but, but Astralis making that heinous last second rotation back is not characteristic of them. Liquid forced them into a very difficult situation, and they still managed to find a way out, which is crazy. There's a Zeus on the field for Stewie. After that knife fight, you know, he's not going to bring another knife to the game. No. With a long-range knife. I almost forgot what a Zeus sounds like. Oh, don't worry. I'll remind you. Okay. If it happens. If it happens. You can't jump the gun. How about if it doesn't happen? Uh, I'll think about it. Okay. I don't know if you deserve it yet. Let's see. Um, Zipex doubles back. Yeah, CTs are swarming the alt and the uh, twist. But, wow. Chimes in with the double think CZ. Zipex got a lot to do, and he's he's tough. He, he, he's, t he's stuck in between two CTs. The USP comes oh. out. Twist will come out for the trade. And he does manage it 3v3. Yeah, that's a little something more to work with. Stewie hoping, praying inside of the church for the construction push, but not going to happen. Blade goes off CT spawn.
tags Nitro down low. There is a player towards spawn, and that's perfect. Glaive gets so blinded on that one that he offers himself up. This is going to draw Device back towards the top of Banana. Now, I mean, come on. The health advantage, the weapons, the armor, the time. It all plays into the favor of Astralis. The CTs are here, and that MP5 starting to get dry. Three quick kills to the favor of Astralis. Three quick rounds as well. Yeah, no, the round was definitely not over. Obviously, as we saw in that 2v3, really well done. And there was a lot to do there for Lepway. But uh, they're, they're forcing these fights. They're making it difficult. They're bringing it to the final few yards every single time. And that's a great sign. Now, we'll get to see Team Liquid on CT side with all of the guns they want. They don't actually have an op, which might be something there. The, the only issue with that is that Stewie, if he's going to be opping over at B, he won't be able to easily let his team um, rotate out now because he only has the rifle. It's going to be more of a 2-3 situation, if not 3-2, over towards the B site. And here we have the banana flambe. All the fire comes out. Um, and and there's a little bit left over for Astralis to just make sure that they can't re-aggress the top of it. And in fact, a second to help them gain further ground. So much transitioning, though, going on with Liquid at the moment through spawn over towards library side. Uh, so that opens a window of opportunity for Astralis to strike, of which they did not. And with Bomb back towards T-Ramp, I mean, that indicates, of course, they're leaving their options open. There's so much time to play. Last time these teams matched up on Inferno, it was a 16-4 victory for Astralis. And I mean, not even close. You know, right. like, kind of like a master class that, that maybe plays into what Nafly was expecting in his yeah. interview. Uh, a map that maybe took a little bit longer than the Major Final. Like, that's, you know, it's just how good they are, obviously. So now that uh, Astralis have moved their way up to the top of Banana, Cut Noise almost completely are now, well, it's now the CTs who are at the mercy of them. When do they want to exec? There's not a CT that's pushing. There's not enough map control here for the CTs. I always harp on that, and they seem to be extremely timid at the moment. <gasps> oh, I thought that was one of the CTs <laughs> peeking down the corner of the smoke. Heart almost dropped. Not the case. Small top deep. It's going to force Stewie's feet. Holy smokes. Yeah, only Card. 15 HP. Glaives will be that first point of contact. He does go down, but so do the defenders. Stewie and Nafly only catching one kill in the process. 15 seconds up is plenty of time for Astralis to get the bomb down. And like we said, a very timid Team Liquid towards that A site means late rotation, which also means easy save call. A, a good team is a team that appears to be in super position. A team that you feel like is in halls when they're not in halls. It feels like they have banana control when there's no one there. I feel a team that has phantom presence all over the map at all times in your mind. You know, that's that's the true definition of fear, and that is what Astralis is so good at, especially on Inferno, where in that situation, they stood almost five players on banana for like 30, 40 seconds of the entire round, took it patiently, sp put, spent a lot of nades there, but there was not a single rotation from Liquid. There was not a single re-aggression from Liquid. In fact, the CTs haven't moved since that point. They've stayed on the site. There's not a fast rotate in store for them. They had absolutely no map control, no information, no read to be made safely. And, you know, one of the reasons that Navi could always take them close on, on Inferno, funnily enough, is because they randomly gamble stack without looking for information. The, the real issue, the real pain point, is when a CT team tries to look for information and loses a player doing so. The problem is that that is a, a necessary win condition to do versus a good team a la Astralis, obviously. Right. So, you know, you've got to be in hall sometimes. You've got to be peeking mid. You've got to be re-aggressing when you hear grenades. And if those don't happen, I mean, this T-side is going to get away from Liquid quickly, uh, quicker than we'd ever expect. Well, talking about that app's aggression, here comes Astralis. Masking it with their own wall spam from the depths of all mid. Zipex sprays close, though, so that's going to indicate to Team Liquid that sure enough, Astralis are in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice spam. You can almost never see the reverse wall bank spam. All right, all right, Alish. We see you. Still chewing gum. This is great. This is what CT, now the, now the MO for CTs, is to get as much damage in without seeing a player as possible. That is the early round. That's banana, that's mid. There's the knee that bounces off the skybox into alt. That's the reverse spam into halls. That's the ball of the the very expensive incendiaries you use to trap device at the bottom of banana. This is your main goal. And you have to hope that it works. A little bit more control, Astralis. Peering through brackets. He's just going to look to take this back with a smoke grenade to cover. The device still floating down at the bottom of the mid. I feel like Team Liquid are doing a good job of kind of, you know, welcoming Astralis closer, but then also then taking back anything they've just given up. 
They still have they still have a decision to make. They're holding on to mid. They're playing with it. They're tethering off each other. But Great look, flash. One person has already made it. The CZ is not good enough to get Ooh. the kill. And Magus with the 180 spray transfer takes the face off of Stewie. And I'm surprised he didn't disconnect off that kill because that is absolute embarrassment. That's crazy no. from Magus. He is contractually obliged to stick around. He's going to have to wallow in his sorrows for the remainder of this one. Bomb planted with five seconds to spare. Nitro not going to have anything to do with this. So this is yet again Team Liquid being forced into the save towards A. And it's not going to come for free. They will most certainly be hunted, not only from the B-bomb site, but remember that Dupree already resides in the apps. An aggressive tenant has been taken down, and now it is just a liege left over. So this looks like the clean sweep from Astralis, and that would put them on fire, folks. The 5-0 start to the T side of their very own map choice. Crazy. On fire already. Truly fantastic stuff. I mean, they, Magic was working alone, a total mercenary in that situation. Working in the B, he's like, I'm going to get a kill. I'm going to cause a rotate. If I die, we'll, we'll still probably win because I've, I'm already here and we have four players over at A. If Liquid are, are suddenly worried about this B play, I mean, look at this, man. Just nasty. He even, I like, mean, to be fair. Flicks to the left. He's on the, you know, he's on like his, you know, 11th, 12th bullet. He's starting to go up to the right and he still adjusts accordingly. It's beautiful. Stewie should have had that. Yeah, yeah. Right? No, no. The 100%. CZ, I think the CZ should have had that too. They both did so, I mean, the CZ did so much damage and then Stewie couldn't get that bullet in. Um, but, uh, but, but still, if that happened, we wouldn't have seen that amazing spray transfer. So, so let him die through the smoke. Uh, Stewie just behind the car box. Down goes a leash. That was over on A. A dual one from Boiler Door. Match is close. Oh, oh my. Dude, just delete Stewie 2K. But these two kills go back each way for both the teams. And we're left in an even keel. However, the advantage to Astralis, they can play shoulder to shoulder. Nafly's position will be smoked off, leaving him stranded in the back of construction. Has to be aware of the potential flank from spawn. Oh man, if they wait too long, this bomb goes down. That rotate is forever. I mean, Naf yeah. has decided to play retake, and now his team teammate is coming over. The bomb gets tapped, but it's safe on top of the grill. He's gonna have to go for the reload as Nitro does arrive, but it's an op on the retake from spawn. This comes down to if Nitro clears this. They've left Dupree towards Banana. Device behind the pillar. That is minimal cover, but it does give him an angle. So he's already posted, anticipating Nitro's peak. Does it go his way? Absolutely. Device, in fact, grabs both and continues the streak of Astralis. Even in the 2v2s, they've got Liquid's number. So damn sick by Device. Really nice opening kill. I mean, Nitro. It was so fast, Nitro didn't even have time to panic shoot, you know, it was just a great peek by him. Um, the setup was strong, could have, it was, it was kind of a situation where if one person dies, the other one's at such a big risk, like, device is technically out in the open. He's behind the pillar, but he can't fall back to emo without exposing himself or get the quad safely. He just has to rely on that one thin piece um, of brick or whatever the hell that is. And, and, for, and for his teammate, Whoa, Banana, push. he was on the left side of it. Big mid push. Nitro and Elise just gonna go charging straight downwards, but there is a gap in the smoke, so Device is happy for them to arrive. Oh, Nitro, this could be his doom. Yeah, sure enough. They have wind as to what's up. But Stewie, here's the climb up into the apartments, gets the dink, not the kill. He almost went full JDM as he tilted backwards in his chair, angry that he couldn't finish the kill. It's pretty lucky to be alive on 11. And as we can see from the map, you're not missing anything. Two players up, both of them at A. B is wide open for the faking. Astralis can move towards it. And it's, and it's another reason that this is so crazy. It feels like there's more... It's the scariest place to end. It's one of the scariest maps to anti-eco on because the rotation from A to B is so incredibly long. There's not two routes into B as well. Um, and that just makes things extremely stressful. Working up top mid versus a four stack pistol, we've seen how that plays out sometimes. The fact that you can crossfire and B with a boost as well as like all, a number of spots where all of the CTs can be totally spread out evenly is also just, just, just incredibly stressful and um, and that's why you've got to play it slow, even in the 5v2 situation. So, another clean anti-eco round from Astralis. Uh, economy is looking very strong at the moment. And Liquid, will they be back on a buy after this one? Full loss bonus, and they save. They, they spent half of their money here. Um, if we just look at the what they've got left over, we'll see. Yeah, they should be fine. 
but has anyone decided to save for the ability to op? And also, what new look are they going to bring to the table? They've they've fought B. I mean, they've showed up to the fight. Yeah. Uh, they just haven't seen it all the way through. Exactly. Stewie did get one spam kill through the smoke on Banana, and then after that, they fell off, and they fall back into this hold, right? Astralis, they love bullying one site. They just always make it seem like they're going to go back to another site by normally playing their anti-ecos over to other sites. Uh, but you can bet that they're going to be a B uh, doing these same full execs that are working for them over and over again, maybe with slight changes. And what's what's uh, what's Liquid's response to that? Are they going to play 3B and hope that they can instead have two players hold a much bigger site with way more entry, entry points? Or uh, are they going to try to fight Banana early, take control of bottom Banana, which is, you know, something most teams won't dare to do, and uh, and then from there, hope to control the pace more because classic and classic CT side Inferno is holding on to banana control, having a person at the the bottom of uh, of logs with the smoke down that he can let later refresh, and then having four CTs at A, and then making either site equally difficult to get into. But in this situation, B, or B is clearly the easier site. Yeah, they've had no problems with it, not at all. Like you said, that one time Stewie comes around for the aggressive. Top mid, uh, top peak. It's not been a consistent theme, but this round it will be Nitro, Stewie, and Naf. All towards Banana. All the while, we've got Astralis with a pretty heavy presence towards Brackets straight out the gate. They're smoked off though, this will delay things inevitably, but they are not going to be deterred by this utility showing alone. Got a lot of bodies starting to push past Twist. It's got an angle downwards. Gets just one kill and a little bit follow-up damage, but nothing more. It's traded evenly back and forth, and then Astralis take the lead. Device watching flank clears Stewie from the problem, and it is only Nafly left. Yeah, man, they really faffed it up on the site. That smoke that went down, uh, that, that smoke that went down just shy of Mordo, Modo. I'm not sure if that was a smoke to help them re-aggress, but it shrouded their own vision trying to fight. And there was a moment there, Twist could have been saved. He, it, the, the reason it was so good he got a kill and stayed alive just for an extra second is so that everybody that now has to turn their attention to Balcony, the first apparent opponent, cannot turn around that easily. Like, Zipix doesn't have a threat there from the site. There's no one at single box. There's no one behind default. It's like people are rotating in from a site that they were defending from the jump. Uh, that's that's not a good sign. Um, that, that, that definitely looked a little bit messier than it should have, and they ultimately had the right idea. Now, the reason that Astralis went to A, was because Liquid went for bottom banana control. So they immediately thought we conditioned them into being afraid of banana. Now they're going all in. There's a situation where there's only going to be two. Uh, there's only going to be two on the other side of the map. They were wrong about that, but they still won. Here we go. A bit of a silver lining for Team Liquid. They've not found just one kill, but two with these pistols. Nitro procures an AK-47. That second weapon out of the hands of Liquid for the time being. What do Astralis do here? They're going to clump themselves together to the top of Banana, function as a single cohort on the execution. And it's going to be even 3v3, because Elige has rotated towards CT spawn. Stewie goes charging forward, and that's going to cost him. Nitro still, that one AK is nowhere to be found. He's going to hold over on towards Pit. So even though those initial threats were real, Team Liquid doing a good job of picking up a couple of kills into the 3v5, Astralis still have the advantage over four of the Liquid players. Definitely. And you can see them exert that here towards B. So curious about how this second half will go. Um, it doesn't seem like Liquid are going to attempt this retake. I mean, if they get a freebie, maybe they move forward. If not, uh, I'm sure Nitro is just waiting for the opportunity for someone to say save because, uh, you know, he's got, he's got the, someone say, the best gun in the game. And it doesn't seem like there is going to be... Um, any, any frisky tees, even riding high on all this confidence, be very careful in the post plant, and also getting one final kill before the round is officially concluded. And Nitro will go back into CT spawn and wait for new opponents. Um, again, problem at B. Glaive also turning up in a big way. Um, something I don't like to do is harp on individual performance um, until the map's over. I think that's, you know, that's probably an important thing that's to do. Fair. Um, but uh, well, Elise actually is you know, short of a kill which is maybe a problem. But you know what? Let's look at the ADR. OK, there's no ultimate scoreboard on this. Unfortunate. Hold on, I got you. That's, you the, that's the one thing that might there be more go, important. Bud. OK, 29 ADR. OK, that didn't work out so well. Um, 
But uh, but on the other side, I was thinking about Glade, who was really lowly rated in the tournament so far. Yes. And he's at 65, so he did farm a little bit on that anti-eco. Uh, Device is the man who's still plowing at over 100 at the moment, so he's pretty much the saving grace. But we're into a new rifle. A player has already died, and it looks like uh, Liquid are, again, exerting their, their dominance on Banana and trying to hold strong to it. Though, they're only peering over the half wall at the moment. Wave. Oh my goodness, supposed to get the best of Nitro. But Nitro's got quick fingers. Just like that, we've got Astralis on the back foot, 3v5. This time not versus one AK and a big collection of pistols, no. Versus a full-fledged buy, including that double op setup. So this is the most difficult situation Astralis have had to deal with in the entirety of these first 10 rounds. The highest, uh, the highest Crown win percentage at a man disadvantage in all of Counter-Strike, right? Yes. 3v, 3v5 would be one level deeper. But point stands. Yes. You are still correct. No one can take that from you, Momo. And look at this. They have three going into B. They have never lost more than one. Let's see. Stewie's got the high road. Flashed fully. Nap line. He's sure enough going to pick one up. I believe that's right through smoke. Yep. Down goes Stu. Nap's gonna have to double back over towards Coffins, the entirety of his team rotating through their spawn. A 4v2, you'd think, is in the bag, but we are talking about Astralis. And Zipex is still on the board. And they have another smoke. He's got that top rope position from Coffins, looks to load Liquid into it, sees the shadow, easy pickup, now it's 2v2. Remember, 2v4 from the get-go, both these teams hiding behind Barbecue. Dupree's position could very well go unchecked. And the counter terrorists, they're just gonna try to cover the smoke. Neither, no. And now he's gonna wildly spray, but the player can't find the bomb. Twist has given it up. Twist miss his chance to clutch. And that is 10 for Astralis. I didn't even believe it. You know, I, re I really didn't. I mean, it's, you know, nine <laughs> rounds in a row, you know. Uh, yeah, 3v5 situation. And there it is. They get in the site, they lose a single player. And that's been a pain point for Liquid. They haven't solved it. They throw the smoke to the bottom banana, but they don't just follow up with that right hook as well. They don't stay down there. They don't force the fight in a different place. And it's just too comfortable for Astralis to have to deal with this. Wow. I mean, they were even fortunate to get that one. I mean, credit to Naf. He got the timing and he, he clicked when he felt the time was right, but there's luck involved in that. And, uh, and, and they, they had all the chances in the world to win that round. <laughs> That's the face of a three times major champion. Buying what they can. And as much as they are trying to compartmentalize this loss, knowing that they're already expecting to not do that well on Inferno, and that if they won, as Nap, quote, Nap, if they won, that would be amazing. Uh, you can still see Stewie, how tilted he is. You know, right, the fact yeah. that they, that's a round they should have won for just in the context of that round. In a vacuum, that round, fundamentally, we should have put that together. Yep. And that's, you know, obviously the right attitude to have. And I'm sure Naf is just like that as well, no matter what he says before and after. Yeah, there's a huge difference in, in you know, just map result versus individual circumstance. It'll like, be difficult for them to mentally totally skip this map. Yeah, yeah, 100%. No matter how much you want to write it off, I mean, nobody likes getting bullied. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> that's exactly not. what's happening here. Yeah. Team Liquid just big getting walloped with a stick. A big Danish stick. <laughs> From Pimp's hot dog stand. <laughs> oh, okay. ding dong. Happy! Mathlai's got the first one. That's gonna bait them into Stewie's crosshair, but he gets nothing. Nah, four smoke spam. Of course. Why not? Is he gonna go one better? There's only 10 seconds for the plant. He could challenge the bomb planter. No, they're going to get it in. Punches in the digits. Zipex, 1v3 versus pistols. Huh. How's he going to play this one? Out in the open. First CT start to trickle past. Excellent flash. He's done for. That flashbang spelled his demise. And finally, Liquid arrive on the board, folks. It took 11 rounds, but they've done it. And they do it with only pistols. Oh, man. Yeah. And, and once again, like, you're like, oh, it's Zipex. But once again, they throw a great flash and yeah. blind, he can't well, shoot. That's a good point. That's how he lost his last clutch. Yeah, attempt, the last right? clutch, yeah. We I found think. is the solution.
Poke his eyes out. Use utility. <laughs> Poke his eyes out, yeah. Uh, yeah, Liquid put one together. I mean, they'll take it, man. We don't really need to talk about how it happened because we saw it did get a, a little bit messy and with that second kill. Yeah, let's go ahead and skip it. Uh, right. If we don't want to talk about how it's going to happen, should we talk about how it's bound to happen? At least once, sure. surely Astralis are going to fumble. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes, they're human. Are they? <clears throat> Evidence, but not proof. Here comes the push down mid. An aggressive stance from Liquid straight out the gate. Twists, turns back, and pops the head of debris. Can't go one further, though. The opera will trade, however. So Nitro maintains the man advantage, and we're going to have Liquid retreat back into safety. I can't remember the last time Zivik was just like sitting up in halls, just doing things you normally do on a default. It's been banana almost every single round. That is so much damage. That's so much damage. Um, Alasia, as the pit player, is going to be absolutely targeted. Uh, we'll also be less keen on rotating now. And uh, although you aren't, you aren't literally wounded. You know, you you don't have like an appendage, appendage that's half falling off. And now you walk slower. You're mentally wounded. You feel less confident in making like hasty rotations or taking risks or walking into places you think nade damage would be. So all of that counts for something. And now he's a weak rotate player. Ooh, there's a gap in that smoke. A big one. Now, fly, it's not the best cover. It's better than nothing. First T, tag down, leave teens. Stewie in the smoke. Astralis in the bomb site. He's going to just charge right through. Stops the plant. That blind spam back from Zipex will still get the best of him, but the rest of Liquid starting to rotate over. A liege. Last man to get into position as Nafly takes another head. Zipex to clutch attempt, and it is shut down. Team Liquid, second round on the board, still potentially gunning for five. They have to be really tricky, you know, real creative with the way that they're getting kills on B, but when all is said and done, they've they, they gotten two rounds off of the back of it. So I think, you know, they're relying kind of heavily on Naf at the moment. Um, like, Naf threw a great flash for Stewie to come out and peek and get that first kill. He also made sure to camp the bomb, maintain vision on it in a situation where he could be like, oh, I'm just going to wait for my teammates and we'll go for this, like, really safe retake. No, he, he found a prime opportunity to sit there. You know, Blaze had to come into his angle that he might, may or may not be still in and uh, made sure to take advantage of that fight. And, and that was very opportunistic. I like that. Now, we move into this next round. Elise gets eliminated immediately. Nitro, is he going to take it upon himself to make up for it? Doesn't seem so. Finds that to be too risky of a thought. To free on the off. When do we see this? Ooh, that's an arrow angle. Wow. He, he must have seen that, yeah. Got him. Yes. Returns his back. Spinal snap from Nitro. That bomb needs to be recovered at some point, but. Got a minute, so. No need to haste just yet. Who do we have left alone inside B site? Uh, Stewie. Stewie. Okay. And does he have an op? Yeah, he does. Okay, so this makes more sense. No? They've got the 3 1. Stewie's in a tough spot. Lots of utility left over. Not much retake utility. So if Stewie dies, they're probably just going to save in the positions they're in. I think the way they look at it right now, we'll, we'll sit on these two ops. We'll not get too aggressive. And we'll save if it is going to be the B site. And Stewie does go miraculous. Five by the smoke had a chance at a shot, but didn't hit the mark. Fire goes behind him. He has to give up his angle. Oh, they're coming in for it. Very quickly, in fact. Nitro trying to line up the shot through the smoke. They've got a lot to lose here. Clearing the top of the boxes in the site. And then tension blankets the server as nobody wants to make a move. Astralis like statues stationary in their after plant setup. The pressure's on Liquid to make their move. Flashbang's meant to activate it. Glaive hides back down by the barbecue. It's Stewie and Twist with the first two kills. And Glaive's now pinched, but they almost line up. And it's a successful Woo! retake from Liquid. Oh my god, I honestly didn't think that was possible with the amount of utility that Astralis had. Well, I guess that, that works out. They got Stewie. They had two ops for the retake. They had no utility to work with. They let the time bleed down to more than half, but I guess they're really careful about their communication. There were, there were only so many spots that Astralis could be in, and they slowly kind of calcified into those positions. And then finally, you know, came out with the great rifle play. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I eat my words. Really, really well done. Um, and, uh, and, and somehow we're able to bait out that much 
of the utility from Astralis on that B exec, so they had nothing left in the post plant. An extra smoke on, on CT could have sealed the deal, but they didn't even have that, so. Now, uh, now, is that three in a row? Yes, sir. Oh, wow, that felt like the longest round that we've seen so far. Um, and yeah, they pick up the three. They've got a lot to work with, and Astralis did so well with their money. They, they're still buying here. Was there a round where you wrote the map off ever? Um, you don't yeah, have to be on it. First ten. First ten. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair. I like that. Answer. I feel like yeah. I, like Nafly, had written this off before it started. Right. How can you be confident? Someone is not confident. How can you be? How can people believe in you if you don't believe in yourself? Yeah, you got to put yourself on. Say it louder for the people in the back. Rohan, Stewie just got eviscerated. Yeah. He didn't want to die. He didn't want to fight. He just wanted to leave Banana. And it's not going to happen. Not on his own accord, that is. He won't be walking out on his legs, but rather the body bag. 5v3, the T's closer to the site. Molotov smokes. It's all going their way here for the point as well. So I was thinking 5-10, worst case scenario for Liquid. Might not even get that. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, looking at this, there's so much to change on Banana. Um, valuable game tape for Liquid, but not much more than that. But still, they go for the retake. Yeah. Quad is mollied out. Nitro moving in with the op, but that's not even necessary. Elise finds the first kill. And the other two on Banana are behind Smokes. Elise just got the wave the back of the site. Now, if, if Twist can just cut off everyone from Banana, then they could have just tried to stick Defuse, but there, there's so many sets of eyes from Astralis off Banana that Liquid don't find their footing. Liquid don't have time. And it's Astralis to nab another round here towards the closing half of the first half. So the second quarter of four within the second half let of the you <laughs> run <laughs> this drive, please. Yeah, that, no, that was cool. Uh, the, uh, yeah, last round now, and, you know, what What more is there to say? Um, that, like, here, there's a couple of individual kind of highlights for yeah. Astralis, the way they, you know, jiggle peeked and then baited with the jump to kill the second player, but to kill Stewie was just a straight up, like, clean jiggle peek. Like, that's not team play stuff, necessarily. It's, it's pretty simple stuff, or at least it's not high level stuff, right? Um, but, but that's just been the tail of the tape on Banana uh, for Liquid. You know, they're finding ways to die without being able to get trades. And they've got two of, like, the most talented players to have to defend it. So something's clearly not working there. And it's really good that Astralis are just simply just bringing it back to basics every round. And, like, listen, if you don't figure this out, I'm going to keep hitting you there, right? Just liver shot after liver shot after liver shot. Aggressive bottom banana stance taken by Stewie is given up. Doesn't want to stick around too long on his own. But what does that leave us with? What sort of setup? Well, Nitro takes his position instead. That Molotov would have completely countered Stewie. So good thing he evacuated the site. Nitro still looks for his angle as the T's do congregate towards him. Catches Glade just to the edge. Despite taking a bit of chip damage from the frag grenades that gave chase, he does still get away. Posts up for another attempt. Ooh, but a great flashbang almost cost him his life. He's on 17 health as Stewie doubles back in to try and help his IGL. Oh. And there you Ooh. have it. The two of them combined for an excellent hold in the closing 30 seconds of the final round in the first 15. Magisk looking to tear forward, charge through, and yet, They've only found one. Stewie 2K comes in for another attempt. 15 seconds left, and Magisk, well, he doesn't even have bomb. He doesn't even have time. Down he goes as Liquid secure the fourth, an 11-4 score at the end of the first 15. It's something, if only small, and it's cool that it ended on a note with Liquid solving their main issue, which was kind of getting kills in sustainable ways, and they did find a way to do that there. It didn't come down to kind of fighting all the way through Banana. Um, but again, you know, that half has passed us now. We'll move into the second. We'll talk about um, both, well, Astralis' CT side, which is going to be amazing, and then also Liquid, and, and how maybe confident and clear-headed they feel in this half. Um, and there's definitely a chance it could, it could all click. This is, again, not a, like this is a map they can make anyone else look stupid on, just not Astralis. So here we are into the second half, folks. It's map two 
uh, a, mir a miraculous almost comeback, if you could call it that, on Dust2 from Liquid in the first game from a 13 10 that Astralis had over them um, to winning their map pick. And now we we'll move into Inferno, a map that they didn't feel so comfortable on. There's overpass ahead of it. Astralis are able to take this home, but this one's not done until we get to 16. So until that point, you know, we're going round by round. Lots of pressure on the pistol. Team Liquid are going to embrace that with both hands. Four T's up banana. We did have Zipex posted closer at the beginning of the round, but he falls back when he feels that pressure and calls for Glaive to come join him. Two dedicated defenders to the B site. A device floating in library with Dupree on porch side and Magisk above pit. So Strauss take the first pistol of the game. And uh, Liquid to employ the same pistol strat. Magic's unchecked. Get himself one kill. Three gets a team kill in the midst of it. And then just after that, Elysian Naf connect the Glocks. That wasn't just a funny team kill. That was a, a serious one. Well, yeah, no. I mean, that was the crossfire. Oh, Nelly. Okay. It's not over yet. They'll have that smoke grenade to nullify Pit. It's going to give him a chance to duel with the players in the bomb site. And sure enough, Zipex takes ahead of his own. Glaive, 1v2. We've got Nitro just playing the pillar to a T at the moment. No kit on Glaive and no head either. Elise will execute. A bit of a saving grace, as we saw no one from Liquid able to best Magisk, but Dupree sure did. Round by round, this, this looks less daunting. That was, an, again, like you can't look at this pistol the shot any any differently than just being so important and you know Dupree we see the blue outline for him he's barely seeing two or three models off the corner of his screen it just so happens to be a very important part of that hold and it looked like things were going swimmingly the first two kills go their way and a liquid can't hold the candle to Astralis' strap but then after that it falls apart and we move now uh, into uh, an anti-eco but this time it's for liquid a bunch of players here at the bottom of Banana starting to work their way up. Expect them to kind of meander at the top of, of Banana as they work other parts of the map simultaneously. And then try to try to get a read on rotations. You know, not, not get any concrete proof, but just some evidence that players have moved before they make a decision. Brackets on the cusp of B site. Team Liquid so close to their targets, but not yet gunning forward. They'll get themselves two kills, sure enough. Magis can't get anything done from Porch, and therefore, 5v2. Stu can leave the B site. No need to overextend and offer up his life, because A is entirely clear. They know it. Glaven Device will just tuck their tails and hope to save the pistols that they hold. Well, Liquid building brick by brick. Put together an anti eco. Lots of, almost, I mean, every player alive so far. It looks like it's going to continue to be that way. And, um, you know, big boy rounds is going to be coming up. We'll have another chance here for Liquid to, to line their pockets, right? With money. With money, if, yeah, if that wasn't clear. And then, and then if they lose a rifle round, it's not the end of the world. But it's really going to be about those really hefty rifle rounds where uh, Astralis have just got like that full Batman utility belt to work with, where we'll really see a challenge come out of them. Liquid hunting down these last few kills so the armor can't be recycled. It is a fair amount of money, a very nice spray from Glaive to catch that a jumping nap. Oh, nope, not gonna happen. Thought for a moment maybe the smoke would be the difference, but Elise will go over, pick up some tidbits of utility. Move Liquid to a five-round deficit now. They nope. start this half, two rounds in the bag. Third one, you'd think, up next. A little bit more difficult on the CT side to funnel all those kills into your SMGs. On the T side, they can lead the way with them, so you can specifically kind of orbit around, uh, around getting your SMGs up front, where everybody else will lag behind. And Make sure you get the most amount of money possible. It is just USPs, so uh, every every kill that's lost to these USPs is tragic. 
any smart team is tense, even in this situation, to make sure they come out clean. Look at that angle. I don't want to, it's gross. <laughs> it's insane. It's cheesy. Okay, Nitro. That could be a real wrench in the works. Enables the wraparound onto the A site. And what's the defense in the form of? Dupree within it. Device on pit. Nitro's charging forward. Easy first kill. Device has gone unchecked for the time being, but there you have it. Naf just Goomba stomps him. And a 5v3 with just USPs left over. Some information seems to have exchanged hands and looked like a lead. May have heard something of three players leaving the site unsure. Yep. Bomb goes down though. Which is important. It's going to be difficult for Astralis to catch rotation. Now, the only thing to maybe point out um, for people who don't know, the idea behind a split, the reason that you don't go five up into a site, is because you want to compromise positions. So, if you have, in that situation, Nitro, he's all alone. Yeah, if he dies, that would be terrible. But the value you get from him wrapping Arch alone is right. that now suddenly there's a lot of spots in pit, on the site, in graveyard, that can't be stood in without exposing your back to somebody else. And that's why, you know, you would send someone out on a solo mission like that. That's kind of the method behind the madness in, in, that, in that instance. And that, will, that's, that's something we'll, that is something that we'll see more often, even on the full execs on these rounds. Uh, Liquid have a very good three arch, one lane, one halls exec that they like to, use, like to do on A. And that'll be nice to see because we saw so much B attention from Astralis yeah. in that last half. Let's turn, let's turn the page on this one. There was almost no Hall's presence apart from Antico's nothing to talk about. Yeah, every once in a while you get Zipex, but yeah, not a series, very often. A series of banana plays and adjustments. Here we go. First gun round of the second half. Astralis fully equipped. No op in play. A couple SMGs still floating around. Keep your eyes on them. Their own Molotov extinguished by their smoke. Enables the arch play with that deep library smoke as well. They have full access to the CT spawn. This is so much pressure on Glaive because there's nobody else inside of the B bomb site, yeah. and he has players just charging straight for him. Now, Device is going to do one good. Does catch a liege, twists, trades. And there is another player here. In fact, there's two. Two CTs behind them on library, and Glaive in the midst of it all. Debris and Glaive, and Glaive again! Magisk seals the deal. Where does this come from? Whoa, they were doing things so well. They moved so quickly. They had Glaive on the back foot. He almost left too late with how fast they were moving, but then they, for no reason, kind of stopped in CT spawn because they were potentially worried that, you know, their play was understood. Yeah. They didn't want to cross into an angle, get op by Device, for example, um, or somebody else. I don't know if they even, if they killed Device who had an op in that situation. But, yeah, they had it open. They got Arch Control so easily, so quickly, got in CT spawn. It's kind of a trek to go all the way up Speedway. Yep. But they did that in record-breaking time and then just didn't continue. They didn't follow through. Maybe just a little bit less confident, hadn't done it enough times, and that's where maybe the inexperience is. Is showing. And gave Glaive a good like 10 seconds to reposition. Even though at no point was Glaive in an advantageous position, he, he at least always knew exactly what was coming his way. Yeah. You know, because he was given that amount of time to figure out the numbers. They stalled, they were spotted. Where would the other remaining members be? Of course, Banana, and sure enough, he clears them both. You know, he's standing here in no man's land when they just come charging forward. No. And that being said, he made the most of a bag of coal. He was up yes. there at the top of Banana and in a, in a tough off angle and took down two players very easily. Fantastic shooting from him, so important to highlight that. But um, a little too late here for Liquid to mess up in those situations. 7-12 and Straws are already off to a fast start into this round. They've knocked down two for the price of one. Now with the three remaining keys, we're going to have an A hit come out. Double pit setup, both behind smokes. It's going to be really hard for Liquid to get these guys out of here. They could just prioritize the plant. But in doing so, that's going to allow Astralis to just rotate their players over. Mm -hmm. What was that? A bit, a bit. <laughs> Twists and Nitro just clear them out right thereafter. I mean, Twists, come on. Uh, yo, wow. What kind of magic is this kid working with? I don't know. I'd like some. I'd eat it. <laughs> Put it on my nose. Don't know what, how I would use it. Never seen it before, but uh, yeah, he's got the sauce for sure. Damn. 
That was a good shot. Let's cue that one to the replays, because, uh, I mean, that, that's a game. I, what, what the tangent I was going to go on to was that even if they get that bomb plant, your pit players can just hold positions and either, A, force Liquid to extend into their crosshairs yeah. to try and force them out, or B, just stay alive long enough for the B players to come join them, and then you're on a retake with players already in, like, you know, the, the crucifix position. Mm -hmm. uh, the counter to site control is pit. Yeah. But, I mean, or you can just spray through the wall and smoke. Sure. That's a solution. Yeah, I mean, they, they cleared everything else out. Yeah, this was just, just amazing muscle memory, right, by yep. Twist. Knows the angle. Yeah, he just knows the angle. And and, and we honestly all do. Uh, we just sometimes don't trust ourselves. I think that's that's definitely a message to people uh, who are afraid to, like, show presence or, like, spam a smoke or something. You all, you, if you play thousands of hours, you almost certainly know those those shots, you know. You smoke or not, um, eyes open or not, you could probably hit them if you tried. Now. It's one of the last, it's actually a force up from a, or, or sorry, it's a half buy from Astralis. Don't want to mischaracterize this. They did save those two guns, uh, but, it, and, it, and it is a round where Liquid are probably pretty clear on what they're going to be going up against, a mixed bag. So they did that, and that also balanced out the win percentage of man disadvantaged rounds that Astralis took one from them in the first half with. Uh, in that 3v5 on Banana. Oh, Vice is going to have some pressure put on him. Good trade but, frag. Yeah, Magisk is the only martyr. Oh, he's between a rock and a hard place. Luckily has an to bail him out. Blade off arch side. Disgusting. He's just going to fall back through smoke. Device, he has tagged himself, but he does have a good position in pit. And Natfly doesn't thoroughly clear his corner, so now these last two Ts could line up for Device, but no, not all of them do. Stu has Bomb and the plant on top of it. He doesn't know how much time he has, so he doesn't know if he can leave the site or if he has to push one angle. You know, if he assumes correctly, one person's lagging behind. He doesn't know if they're going to split up on the attack. He's going to pick an angle. He's going to hope that's the angle first. He yep. might listen for utility. And once he takes a shot, that's when it becomes real. They're both coming. There's a bit of delay between the ladies and backs there. The first one can Stewie predict the second. Doesn't seem so. Repositions into cover and Zipex trade frags to the success of Astralis. A 13th round, a five round lead. And finally, they break that spree. It was liquid. Back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, and there's the mental gamble. He just assumes they're going to split up, Atten immediately turns his attention to Art, uh, to Arch, excuse me, to make sure that if there is a person there, he trades. And it's a 50 50 on Astralis' side, 50 50 for Stewie mentally, makes the wrong gamble. And, uh, and, and Zipex comes out, comes out for another 1v1. Much more freer than he's used to, but a really good trade nonetheless. Um, pretty good attempt here, but actually, this was just a half buy. I mean, they they, 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 they invested in some armor and pistols, and they retained uh, a couple of guns from that previous round. Yes. So the investment wasn't high, but they did still have good weaponry. Tough round to lose, obviously. You see Stewie is going to have to take that one on the chin, move forward one round at a time. If it came that close before, that means you've still got a chance in basically every round. There's a lot, there's a lot for Astralis to play with. Not really a huge shame to lose that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a game of inches, so giving up an advantage like that might be one too many. It's not the first round either where they've had, like, some substantial footing or a substantial advantage that slipped past. Sure. I think of the 4v2 towards the site in the first 15. Yeah. You know, those rounds, those rounds is, is what makes the difference between this 13 and 8 scoreline. Sure. So, yeah, that's true. it's all going to, I'm sure, be in the back of their minds, but hopefully deep in the depths, you know? Yeah. Remind yourselves, like you said, round by round, piece by piece, kill by kill. Brick by brick. Ounce by ounce. Uh, Mac 10, Mac 10 for Stewie. Low in utility almost everybody. People buying down to zero. Running out of options, running out of time, running out of wiggle room. Wave, easy 2K. He's even gonna bag himself a third. They just feed themselves into the M4. Device rattles off the off, doesn't hit his mark. Stewie retreats off the back of this with the bomb carrier in the form of NAF. Can't even tell if they're going through Astralis' smoke or their own smoke that slightly missed. It was a jumble. It was a jambalaya. There was all kinds of things in there, and all those things went wrong. Uh, that looked pretty terrible for, for Liquid, from Liquid's perspective. Ooh. But for Glaive, once again, he's there, he does his job, right? He, he meets you there, and, and he puts in the work. Bro, there's a chance here. Uh -huh. Stewie 2K just needs to crack open that pit because the closest player for Astralis 
is going to be Glaive on Arch with Zipex near him. So if Stewie and Naf can find the timing versus Magisk 2v1, then they would have had a plant off the back of it. But with 30 seconds, we've got Glaive and Zipex shuffling over, one of which has been caught. Now Stewie's looking to join Naf Good as day. they rotate back to B and Device. You heard him call the audible. Yep. Device is going to double back towards Coffin side. This is going to come down to Device. He can stop this with just a couple op shots or a Molotov. Oh, He's are. looking for the alternative plant. There's the first one. Stewie peeks into it. Nafly, he will get this plant off and a chance at a 1v3. This started 2v5, and it's left us here now. But Nap with a Glock in hand, he's going to swap back to the SG for the win in the duel, but it costs him so much health. Down to 29, and a player taps Bomb, elicits the peak, and costs him the clutch. Terribly difficult. That right there is 14 for Astralis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terribly difficult for him to be able to win that. Device well, places Waltoff so nicely. I mean, it was just front sight, so it was like, right. Grail Plant can't come out, but he's like, all right, I can't cover everything, but if somebody wants to come out and, and perform the standard clear, they might jump over and look across, um, and, uh, and and Device pushes Stewie in a position to use himself as a meat shield, obviously, because if the bomb uh, is, if the bomb planter is killed, then it's all over. But like you said, there was there was actually a chance, and uh, Stewie cleaned up a kill. It wasn't the pit kill, but there was an interesting rotation back to B instead um, that almost brought it back. But again, a game of inches and Astralis are, are way more accustomed to those situations. To explain Naf's play and why he runs down Banana with his walkout, he actually said in all chat after, because Astralis said, dude, what are you doing? And he said, 1v3? Nah, I was going to save. <laughs> he just planted bomb and he ejects out of the site. Didn't even want to play for the clutch. Uh, he was so you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. No one would ever do that. <laughs> it's not. Fly, I, he, I think he might have not had a lot of bullets in his, in his SG. Okay. Uh, or he's just trying to get somewhere faster. Mind game bombs. Glaive, arch side versus these upgraded pistol arrows. Easy two-piece. Who's next? Should be Nitro. Because we've got Stewie and Naf trying to challenge the opposite side. Ooh, nobody's successful in their endeavor other than Astralis through and through. Four frags, and just Stu. Cut down as the last. Astralis securing map point. Seven map points, in fact, to work with before we will move to overpass. Or at least so it seems. Might be better to end it earlier than later. Yeah. 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 Don't invest the effort. You know, we do take all those close rounds and put them in Liquid's favor. Then yeah, they win. But they, you can't you can't do that with Astralis because they always win those rounds. So it's like it's not really 50-50 when it's against them. And uh, yeah, I mean stamina wise, right? You know, it's it's not a marathon. It's a best of three. But it has felt like a dragger. I mean, it's so difficult. I mean, it must be mentally taxing to go through all of these situations and protocols versus the team that just. Like, no, can go through every single detail to get you killed, and then do that for so many rounds in a row, and then go two maps in, and then think about bringing it all on your third map as well. So, there definitely might be benefits in that situation. Oh my god, he's blind. Normally that stops the Astralis bots, but... I mean in like a Terminator form, not, you know, negative connotation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like kill bots. Right, yeah. To be clear. Really good ones. Uncontested on Inferno yet again, so it seems. There have been openings, there have been chances. There's also been a whirlwind of success here for the Danes. So, Team Liquid, gonna try and keep it simple. Hit that B bomb site, challenge both Zipex and Glaive in what would be the 4v2. Utility coming out of Astralis here is actually near non existent. One smoke for Zip, nothing on Glaive. There's that smoke, and they're going to run through it. Zipex ready for the push. Glaive takes the high road. Stewie trades back, and now he's going to have to clutch. Clearing Zipex first and foremost with 30 seconds left over, and another CT hot on his heels. Now he clears the bomb site, and he's going to go for the plant. Such low health, however. Flashbang and a kit on Magisk. Got Magisk coming in from Banana. Stewie could just peek up and take that duel. He does. The damage is there. And oh my, almost the kill. 10 HP to make the difference. And Stewie's not going to run and hide. Looks to rather hold the line. Challenges the bomb site. Spamming through will cost him. It's Device to get the best of it. Astralis to best Liquid. And we folks have been pushed to the third map of this Grand Finals. Overpass up next. Yeah, the score doesn't necessarily do it justice with how much effort that Liquid put in. But they did dig their own grave in the first half, losing those first 10 rounds in a row. And obviously never solving that very, not simple problem, but very kind of
a static problem of not being able to hold on banana or be able to put together these holds on banana that could have given them the more sustainable rounds and not having to have had relied on these clutch situations or these kind of risky 1v2s to go in their favor. So overall, you know, Astralis just basically slightly outplayed them all the way through, and yeah. it's exactly what most of us expected. Most certainly played them through it. I mean, you know, we, we started to talk about how this could become the comeback, but let's be real. Like you said, 10-0 start to Astralis. We get four of the last five rounds in the first half. And then it's a pistol conversion, a little exchange of rounds, and then four straight from Astralis. So at no point was Liquid ever in this map. Right. And they didn't expect to be, we didn't expect them to be. If ever they were going to have a chance at not just winning one map, but this entire series, Inferno should not have been a part of that. Even Naf said it himself. If we win Inferno, that is miraculous. So, folks, overpass next. We're going to see you guys there. This is the culmination of a lot of hard work. That is what champions are made of. You have to bring your absolute best. Come through. And now with 30 seconds, oh no! Holden gonna win that fight as well. I know, my heart's racing right now. Like a thousand <laughs> beats a minute. Everyone to Blast Sao Paulo. Yes, we arrived here at what is going to be the final game in I think about 15 minutes, which does mean that Astralis equalized to absolutely no one's surprise on Inferno. I hope everybody used the time to go get some tea, maybe have a bathroom break, I don't know, take the dog for a walk because Perhaps. look, that was, as we all figured, going to be just a, a walk in the park. You know, sure the scoreline, the way that it should, there's actually some rounds where I think, you know, Liquid had a chance to get into that matchup, and if they practice it, then I think there's an opportunity for them to take the fight to Astralis in the future on that map. But here, based on the NAF post-game interview, 
I didn't see much hope for them. Yeah, and we were talking about it mature during the game. Like, why would you then do that? Because you know you're going to have to ban out Nuke, right? You know you're going to have some other maps that you can't play, and you most likely will end up on Inferno. So why don't you give it a little practice, dude? It is really confusing, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I don't even know if the interview was maybe a little bit of intox. I don't yeah. know. The thing is, when you think about the Major, as Chad said, if you were going to remove Nuke against Astralis, you will play Inferno. Mm. There's no doubt, no mystery. So why would you not prepare Inferno? I don't know. I'm just really confused as to that interview. So I guess we can just look at what's impressive for Astralis, yes. right? Which, which makes sense. Now they've moved forward to a 16-map win streak on land on this map. So they have two maps in their back pocket, and we've talked about it throughout. It's been it's been a really hot topic. Astralis are the hottest topic, and this goes with it. Nuke and Inferno are basically no-go zones for everybody else in the scene right now. The fact that somebody has dominated one map, let alone two, is absolutely phenomenal. We've seen huge win streaks in the past from squads, but never on two maps, never consistently on land, and never with titles coming back to back to back like what we see from this team. Yeah, and on Inferno specifically, uh, I asked you guys during the game, so what is it that makes Astralis so good on this map? And Mature, you were talking uh, especially about the way they control Banana and the way they play that aspect of the map. Yeah, totally. For me, there were two very important points in that first half from Astralis. The first one is they could do whatever they want. They had full Banana control. One one of the reasons is when they are on the defense, they are the one who revolutionized really the way to take Banana. So as a result, they know how to counter that. They know how to take Banana. They had it the whole side. And the second aspect for me is the bomb plant. How many times have we seen a bomb plant on B being defended by Astralis so well? Device and three, I think, did it in a 2v4. That was so obscene to watch. Yeah. And that was the story <laughs> of the dirty. first half. Any rounds that Liquid had any business winning, they lost it. Yeah, I think that's a good point. If we can back that up with a stat line here, there was 14 kills that actually went in the favor of Liquid compared to only 10 of Astralis. So Astralis either did a fantastic job of trading or making the best of mid-round situations, which should be very difficult to do on the T side of Inferno. Sure, you can execute onto the B bomb site, give yourself 2v4 situations to at least fight to get the bomb down. But to do that, you know, is one of these amazing things. We saw it in the final against Ent the Major. They did it in situations yeah. where they had absolutely no business. So they continue to do this, and it's no surprise. And a recurring factor there is Device, uh, which is a guy who plays so well that you forget that he is there and that he is playing so well. Because a lot of players have ups and downs, or they're consistent, and then they reach these high peaks. This guy, though, all the time, he's on top. Yeah, I would argue that Device is currently suffering from the simple syndrome, sure. which is you always play very well, people forget about it. If you have a down game, everyone will jump on you. And only when you reach extremely high height, then someone will say, oh, Device is having a good game. He's always consistent. He's always there. It's kind of like Sponge on the Analyst. He is, He's always the great. Uh, the I thought we were going to talk about the Vox Emino vs. Titan <laughs> game. You may not have heard about this. It's one of she the greatest games. There's no me, need to mention me, that. Me. There's no what need. <laughs> it's the greatest game of Counter-Strike ever played. Uh, we're in the green room after. I'll put it on the demo on and You can watch yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll review it later. But uh, look. Device coming into this final was leading the pack to be the MVP of the tournament. Yep. And that, I don't feel, has changed, changed? No, just yet. Glaive, obviously, you know, he's putting in a massive hole. You compare him between yesterday and today. Obviously, that's day and night in the mm -hmm. performance he's putting in today. He's been a massive uh, factor in getting them this far. But as we look forward, as we look at the next map of Overpass, I'm almost at the position where you can see the smiles on the face of Liquid. You can see how happy that they were just, you know, to be in that game at all. You know, you, they, they weren't too worried about the fact that they were losing. It's yeah, but Chewie had still, a tilt moment. But yeah, you're still expending some energy, though, and I think it's just if they end up losing, yeah. right? Which we're going into a different scenario on Overpass, right? And that is much more equal for both sides, where this was very Astralis skewed on Inferno. But why do you do that to yourself? Because now you went from this high, this dust two, you're able to close out into this game where you get completely spanked around by Astralis, and then you have to reset. Uh, or is it easy to just brush that off and but say, whatever? I'm going to nuance that, saying that yeah. if Astralis had won 16-1, yeah. well, okay. that is so hard mentally. Get shut down like that. Sure. But they we saw, back. exactly, we saw Liquid push back a little bit. So I mean, did, if it was, did shine yeah. in a very difficult setting, as we said, they almost had a way back into the game. That can make a difference going through the third. Just feeling yourself a little bit better and more you comfortable. You convinced me, actually. And, and I don't want to say that Naf went into that game expecting to lose, but he didn't go in expecting to win. I know they're two completely different things when you think about it, but the way that he was talking flippantly about Inferno and not having practiced it, he said it would be insane if they were to win it. So when you go into a game with that mindset, it doesn't help us feel you like the, them with much confidence, right? If they don't have confidence in themselves. So going on to Overpass, we actually saw some close matchups historically, MIBR versus the likes of Astralis. Today, the first half was close, and then yeah. it kind of changed from then on out in the second. 
but that is a silver lining if you are a team like uh, Liquid, who they said earlier today they think it's their best map. Yeah, and why is it their best map? Can you guys elaborate on, you know, what are, are they creative on that map? Do they have the individuals to shine? Do they have the strategy? Uh, I, I think they, they have a good balance of players being able to be aggressive because I think Overpass is a map that allows a lot of aggression, mm -hmm. a lot of individual space to make plays, and I feel like they have good ways to finish the round, which is extremely hard on Overpass. Yes, you can take the and neutral areas, Scarlet. exactly, but how are you going to attack a bomb site? How are you going to make that bomb plan happen? I feel like Liquid have that in the bag, at least they understand it, how it works on the map, and they've had good results. So yes, going into the third map, there is a chance, but remember, this is Astralis. Yeah, but I feel like uh, now that I've heard you explain, hey, they pushed back against Astralis, on Inferno. They've had very competitive games against them yesterday and today, and they won that dust too. It's little information that Team Liquid is stepping forward, and we're not expecting them to jump over Astralis, right? We're expecting them to play a final like this and push just far enough to push past them. And I feel like this could be the moment, but of course, uh, maybe that's wishful thinking. The only detracting factor is me is the draw with Ants versus Liquid, right? I'm not taking anything away from Ants. What I mean is that that may be, you know, a blip on the radar, considering when you look at the way Liquid played overpass at the Major, they were having games where they were just getting across the line. Okay. They were victories, but they were just getting across the line. So you keep that in mind here. If they think it's their best map, and I, when you ask the question, why, why do they think it's their best map? I'd struggle to put my finger on that, right? The CT side, we used to talk about FaZe Clan when it was their best map as the CT wall, because you'd go, oh, well, Rain and Guardian are at A, you've got Olaf and Nico towards B, and then Carrigan swinging, and it's like, wow, you know, that's yeah. super defense. But pound for pound, individual-wise, you could say the same thing about a team like Liquid, but I still can't pinpoint why they would think it's their best map. Yeah, especially when you can say all those things about Astralis too, exactly. right? And uh, unfortunately, for Liquid, that goes for every single map they play. And I think Potter is also standing by, and she's going to tell us why we should be so hyped about Overpass, I believe. We should definitely be hyped about Overpass Shocks. I've noticed, actually, I wanted to give you guys a heads up on Overpass. Liquid has been doing something a little bit familiar on their pistol rounds on that defensive side. Uh, Nitro at the Major, he actually bought dualies and rushed into Connector, and this enabled him to have a fast rotate towards that short B. And we saw that once again earlier today on that Overpass match. And this resulted in him getting two easy frags with the enemies not even looking towards him. So I'm curious to see if Liquid bring out that pistol once again. I've already seen it actually three times in the last three times that they've played Overpass. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. We saw some good Deagle moves from Elise also, I believe, in the last map. So that is a strength for them. Do you agree with Christine? Is that the way to go? Well, I would agree that Liquid have to do this if they want to beat Astralis. Yeah. They have to bring a little bit of exotism. Why not take Dual Elite and go in the door, right? You, you're you against the wall. You have to take a chance. You, you're not going to play just a regular game and win it. Yes. So why not? I like that. So, Christine, uh, do you think they're going to win Team Liquid? You know what? Uh, I think they will win. I want to ask you guys to give me some predictions for scores. What oh. do you think the score is going to be for Overpass? Ah, oh, we still oh, have yeah. our... Still got my head away, but hold up, hold up. I like drawing things. We, we can't tie anymore, can we? <laughs> uh, look, you can go overtime, so yeah. put as many rounds on the board uh, actually, as you want. Actually, that is interesting. This is the first time that we'll have overtime, if it happens. All right, hold I'm up. I'm typing with this tight. I think it's okay. Do you win? Yeah, because, oh, I yeah, give you I my pen if you want to go over. Yeah, Here cool. we go. <laughs> I'm going to reel first, because I uh, was the quickest at arts and crafts in school. So I've gone with 16-12 in favor of Astralis. Uh, I was going to say 16-13 Astralis, so, oh, you know. Close. Well, I voted for Team Liquid in the beginning, so I'm going to stick to my guns and say they're going to win 16-14, oh. so that it's very exciting nonetheless. I like how you kept your handwriting quite small there, <laughs> even though you have a whole page to work with. Yeah, I just like to underplay my strengths. I know you always like to toot your own horn, but, you know, what? that's how it goes. Uh, well, yeah, after you watch the Vox Eminor versus uh, Titan game, then you'll you understand why. All right, you'll thank work you. it out. Thank you, Christine, in, a, in any case. I was look she's not over there. She's totally in a different uh, part You've of really the really ruined it. You've broken the fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it for two days, and now I've broken it. They didn't it. know. They didn't know. God damn it. All right, uh, where do we go from here? You guys say that Astralis is going to win. Yeah. I'm not going to try and argue because I'm obviously not the expert. Um, tell me who's going to win it for them. And don't say device. What? What do you mean, don't say device? He just had two great games. This is Overpass. He has so much impact on the map. We've seen it even today against MIBR. He was so clutch on that A-bomb side. Yeah. I feel like Magisk is not getting any, like, praise. Well, the yeah. whole team. That's why yeah. Yeah, when, that's you, when most people watch our segments and we talk about this, the Astralis in the game, we usually talk about the other team. Because Astralis is so great that if we were to talk about them, we'd be here all day. The, the list is as long as my lanky arms. But, look, I brought up the stats on HTV to Org here for these two teams. Now, they're, you know, the 
pound for pound, if you compare their stats, they're so very close. Round win percentage is 57.6% for Astras, and it's 52.5% for that's Liquid. Close. So yeah, it's quite close there. But then you go into opening kills, 52.5 for Astras, 51.5 for, for Liquid. That's super close. close. Again. That's 1%, <laughs> right? Yeah. You keep going down the line on these margins. Opening kills, 0 0.89 to 0 0.87. 5v4s, you've got 78.1% uh, for Astras, 72.5% for Liquid. All the stat lines are so very close. But this is where a game, when we talk about it, comes down to those pivot rounds, right? Yeah. That's the clutch situations where the likes of Mr. Clutch Minister himself, Zipnik, shows up, where Device does have those crazy rounds where he's going to grab 3k with the AWP. But the same thing can be said for Liquid here. It can be done across the board. So if this game should be close, and I think our score lines kind of indicate exactly yeah. that. But it's going to be those little tiny, the minutia, the details of the game that's going to, you know, pivot and make it uh, another exciting matchup. And what would be super poetic if it's Stewie 2K who goes absolutely big because he, of course, came to that team and, and wanted to help invigorate them and get those titles finally. So I would definitely love to see it. But we don't know at this point, and that is what is so exciting. So we are going to take a quick break before the final game of the Blast Pro Series, Sao Paulo, between Astralis and Team Liquid. We'll see who takes it after this. Welcome to Blast Pro Series. It's going to be another tremendous day of Counter-Strike. Six teams, it's quality over quantity, and everyone seems to be on their game. Basura! Oh! Dash! Dash! You explaining days are over. Because you are sportsmen. That is what champions are made of. Seems like the fans are ready. Are you guys ready? Wow. <laughs> it's time for the final ingredients. Let's get the teams out here. You have to bring your absolute best. This may actually be a harder mental task than winning the major. It's another duel for Zipex. There it is, the kill is up. Oh my god! These guys are the best in the world. When you put five of them into a server, they're gonna make some magic happen, right? Another outrageous round between these two teams. Which team do you want to face in a standoff and battle for $20,000? Get to the spot. Oh, very nice there from Forrest. Take it up a notch, then let's go goals! Astralis and MIB are... <laughs> this is gonna be good, MIB taking out Na'Vi. Astralis, Na'Vi! Yeah, what we'd hope for in Grand Finals. I know, my heart's racing right now, like <laughs> thousand beats a minute. Are you ready to get this show on the road? Let's see what they can bring to the table here. We're getting wild in front of the no way! Simple! That's when he gets peaked, and Brown stolen back. Astralis three away from another trophy. We are looking to push this to a third map, and they absolutely will. They will not go down without a fight. Step by step, NIP is losing players. They just don't have the ability to recover from it. They have looked absolutely incredible. As simple as this. this would be huge. They need it now. But in a very fitting fashion, your champion, ladies and gentlemen, Astralis. Your new Blast Bowl champions, Navi. to be like the best year of my life and I'm just enjoying <laughs> it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up, Navi! It's Astralis! Hello there and welcome back to the Blast Pro Series Sao Paulo Grand Final! Oh my goodness. What a day it's been, Kawai. What a day it's been. Amazing day. I'm so thankful for being here right now. Actually, I feel like we got to thank those guys, the casters in the arena. They have been working for the past six hours straight. Let's have a round of applause for Gordox and Bida. Our Portuguese casters have smashed it. In fact, while we're at it, guys, 
I want to say a huge thank you as well to my incredible co-host here. A big round of applause for Mr. Kawai Mora! This guy. This is great. And another huge round of applause for the man, the legend, Mr. Adam Savage! Stop. Oh, stop it, Kawai. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. We're all best friends now. It's great. Yeah. Uh, what an amazing day it's been. There's a, a few minutes away now from the grand final, the final map of this grand final, uh, heading into Overpass. Um, I want to ask you this very quickly, as I'm sure, obviously, you guys have been amazing all day long, giving us your everything. Cheering has been amazing. What's it been like for you as a Brazilian, amongst all your uh, Brazilian family, friends, um, having MIBR here competing yes. and bringing CS to Sao Paulo? How, much, how great has it been? It, is, it has been crazy. It has been the greatest honor to have this amazing crowd cheering throughout the whole day. They, they never gave up, even though we don't have a Brazilian team in the finals. They're still here and they're still making noise, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yeah. So, yeah. are you enjoying the party? My first time in South America, I've never been here. I knew it was going to be amazing. I knew you guys were going to be out of this world, and you have blown my socks off. There have been highs and lows, including my vocal cords. We heard that earlier on. They completely went. Uh, but uh, even though, as you're right, MIBR didn't make it to this final, it's still been something I'll never forget. So thank you guys so much for being awesome. You absolutely rock. I love it. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed the show so far at home as well, but we have got one map left, our very last map uh, before we crown our champions. Uh, it's 1-1, one, one. Astralis 1, yeah. Team Liquid 1. The question is, Kawe, who do you think is going to take home this epic Blast trophy? Well, I think I share the same opinion of the arena. I think I got to go with Team Liquid. Do you guys think Team Liquid are going to win? <laughs> All right, seems pretty, yeah. seems pretty, seems pretty good. I'm not going to ask them if they want Astralis to win. I'm just going to move on. Okay. Just going okay. by what happened earlier. Let's yeah. just move on. That's a good uh, but um, you know, it's been an amazing day, and uh, hopefully, obviously, there's likes of Miami's coming up, Madrid's coming up, the Blast Pro Series. How much have you guys enjoyed being here at the Blast Pro Series? Have you enjoyed this? You have? Well, it's only the beginning of the season. There is so much more coming your way. We're being told in our ears. It is time, guys. It is time to head into the final map of the Blast Pro Series Grand Final here in Sao Paulo. One more time, guys. Let me hear you, Brazil! Come on! Let's head over to Scrawny and to Lauders. We're going to overpass. Let's do this thing. Here we go! Absolutely right, Adam Savage. So much Blast Pro Series still to come, but only one more map here in Sao Paulo. We've got Liquid with a win on Dust 2, a whooping on Inferno, yep. and now one final chance here on Overpass, a map that they used to win versus Astralis at I Buy Power Masters. Yep. Will history repeat itself? Will Astralis fall again? It is time to find out, folks. We begin in this third and final map. It's the fantasy major final that never happened, and we'll get the repeat of I Buy Power. We're gone to a third map. Liquid are the first team to take a map off Astralis, period, in this, in this match so far, so now. Coming down to Overpass, in my heart of hearts, I think probably 16-12 Astralis. But 16-12 Astralis, I think that's a very malleable scoreline. I think, you know, again, a game of inches, a yeah. game where Liquid could easily, with those clutch situations, with some better setups, win the game. I think Chad said it best, it's the pivot rounds, the high-octane moments, the pressured situations, of which currently we're in one. The first opening pistol, Stewie, he was hiding. He was hiding behind the barrels this entire time. He creeps out from the smoke like a goblin, and he just stops the bomb plant. Now, this is super key because it enables Naf to come in from behind and catch matches. Oh, oh he's no. not going to get another because Glaive finds him. 2v2, Mohan. A travesty as Glaive is able to get that kill. An amazing flick, like 45 degrees sharp on the button. And that puts it back into a 2v2. Twist is low. Glaive is near. Just crouch walking out past ramp. CTs closer towards the water side. You've got Twist in the back line because he does only have that 13 health. Stewie, who started off this whole situation and does hold on to the kit, is the one who gets next contact. Just looking to pop the noggins. Astralis, they get him back, though. 
It's Device with the kill and Twist with the clutch attempt at a distance on the USP. And the bomb will certainly be planted and not even needed, folks. It is the kills to come in for Astralis. They pick back up their pistol, one that looked like they were going to win from the get-go. Yeah, it did. And, you know, played a key component in that last few, in those last few moments to put the bomb down to bait, Twist into peeking, to have Device on the side to be able to peek out, get finished, and complete that 3K. The first two were fantastic shots as well. And it looked like there for a moment was Stewie stopping that bomb. Oh, oh my God, that just is... That was more nice. insane than, and like imagine he dies two v one in the favor of Liquid easily around they win so really ridiculous stuff by them, um, and I imagine that's something like Device reacting to it. But uh, now we're into an anti eco Liquid or and you can call it an anti eco, but it's kind of anti force. Alige has a scout, Twist has a Deagle, and uh, there's a couple of CZs on the board. Utility, sparse but still relatively decent for Liquid. Yeah. There's options here for them to implore and uh, they're on the CT side, so they'll most likely have to move less. There won't be any fakes in store for them. Plenty of smokes in fact. CTs of gliding Stewie 2K will be caught in the end by the UMP. Glaive with a grenade in hand, has to be cautious. Twist is near with that deagle, so deadly, but doesn't pay off. Nav all the while still inside of these smoke grenades, and you can see with the spam, they have an inkling as to him being here, but oh my god, he's gotten past it. Oh, he just got shanked in the back. Dupree slices and dices the Canadian wide open. 3v2 to the favor of Astralis. Nitro's gonna come down from Graffiti. Teammate just by his side. That's a scout and a USP for the two to try and work with. The bomb's been planted, so the job now infinitely harder. No bullets left over there. Dupree just had to swoop in for the knife kill. There's no other option for him to use. There's Nitro to try to jump spot. There's not gonna be a T in sight. No easy option to take out first. Peak is made, and, and Zipix is the one who comes out on top. You know, Legion will now be forced to save. He's got a lot to lose. He's going to fall back now with the scout. Uh, his his flash and smoke, I think, if, if I'm reading that correctly. And um, and then we'll move into the next round. He can recycle this. They'll probably upgrade or half upgrade. And there were a number of, a number of pistol or uh, SMG kills, excuse me, to go to the UMP, to the SMGs in general. And that's a lot of money that Astralis are taking to the bank. Clean round so far. Clean rounds so far, excuse me, for Astralis, both on the B site. And here's yeah, Stewie, <laughs> Flu Fluey 2K sliding across Monster and, and Dupree just, yeah, basically forced to use his, his sword. He would never do it. Um, he would never do it if he had the option. Two rounds, though, where, where, you know, some cheeky play from Liquid, whether that's Stewie inside of the smoke on barrels, or in this case, Nafly just emits the smokes on short. Yeah. You know, trying to throw a real wrench into the works, like working with their minimal investment, obviously off the back foot, but still trying to make the most of it out of just being unpredictable, being cheesy. But uh, there's some head cheese for you. Elise just gets splattered on the back of Party, not having too much fun. It's not a triple boost we're seeing, yep, but it, uh... Dissolves quite quickly. Straws here. Lots of players outside towards bathrooms. Slow rotation from the CTs back up in the CT spawn. Try not to make their presence known. They haven't heard footsteps above them either, so gamble read as we move almost into the minute mark. And it'll, it'll come down to whether a straw just kind of run into this. They're going to hide the boost. They're going to keep an extra player on Optimus and hope that the prying eyes of Astralis come their way. This is uh, one of those examples where, you know, one flashbang can be a world of difference. Definitely. That's going to be Nitro here priming it. So off that pop, you'll have the peak, more than likely from twists, and the activation of the totem pole. Yeah, I mean, they're in the sight. Bomb could actually turn tail and run, so depending on how these kills go, could Perfect. change the course of the round. And twist position still unbeknownst to the player on the bomb site. He's gonna run over towards Bank, sure enough gets away. Doubles back with that MAC-10, kills Twist. Nap dealing additional damage, but Device is going one better. Clearing out the Bank and really nullifying the threat here as Bomb comes in tow. 15 seconds left though, and Nap, why? Well, he's gonna charge forward. You know, we saw a great interview with Twists after their round five game where, you know, there's moments where you just have to make a move. Uh -huh. if, if you do nothing, then you'll get nothing. Sure. And even if doing something will cost you your life, you're trying to create disruption, and here you have that, of course, on the A site. 100%, so they right? Get it to the dwindling seconds. You cannot be worried about what people are going to think about it if you fail. Right. It's a loser's mentality. You do it because you believe it's the right decision, and it, depending on the circumstances, no matter what the risk, 
just because you believe that is the correct decision and then you go from there. That's a, that's a true winner's mentality for sure. And I think that round's completely different if somehow they, they keep Device from getting inside of Bank. Mm -hmm. You know, if Twist was able to cut him off when Naplight gets that first kill, world of difference. But that's all behind us, folks. Three rounds deep, all of which belong to Astralis. Now, this is where men are made, the gun rounds. Nitro equipped with the op, Augs all over, utilities there, and so is Astralis, clumped up outside this B site. Yeah, number of CTs just Owning the perimeter of the map, we know Astralis have an affinity for B here. They're going to take short control. They're going to throw all their smokes from there. They're going to do monster walkouts. And that's not going to be a secret to Liquid. The difficult part is actually stopping them. Stewie had a small moment where he could have gotten that kill for absolutely no cost. And now he's actually gotten his teammate to smoke this off. So, or no, he, he releases his own. Good counter flashes as well to quell the rush. But he's still pinned in. He's being given some space to actually what it seemed like, eject, gets caught in the process. Dupree doubles down with the headshots, finding Naf in the heavens above, clips his wings, and now it's Twist to try his hand, but Device gives cover. Dupree, excellent entries, times two, and a trade frag back that gives Astralis a very strong after plan. At this point, seeing as it's the first full investment, you know Team Liquid tuck tail. Initially looked like Stewie had his teammates smoke it, but it looked like he released his own yeah, smoke, and I was hand. thinking, you know, Astralis are almost certainly, certainly going to wait this out knowing that Stewie's crouched in that corner, but since he used his own smoke, it seemed like he was worried that it would dissipate, they would molly him out of that position, tried to get out early, and it was Almost a, got away. Yeah, almost got away, but yeah, there was a couple of bad timings there. Him, first of all, like, holding that angle for so long and then giving it up right before Magic shows face, and then after that, dropping the smoke and then leaving um, while the smoke was still up in a situation where they were totally intending on going B. So bad read on the, on the feeling of the round for Astralis. They, had, they definitely want to go B, and I think his initial assumption was correct. If he had trusted that, it probably could have worked out a bit better. But good on Dupree and Magis for being as patient as they did. They stood in front of the counter flashes, they waited, they came out afterwards, and then all the kills went their way. They, the CTs had more than enough manpower to work with. That was not the issue. It, was, it just came down to individual decision making and timing. Now it could come down to the fact that they're playing off a disadvantage. It's pistols back around the two safe weapons of Team Liquid. Deagle double CZ. Kevlar for twists. Not even that for Naf or Stewie. Astralis going back towards this B site. Seems to be their primary target so far at the game. Nice wall damage. My goodness. Naf I nearly killed from this. But he'll still have a chance with that Deagle. Truly lucky to be alive in that situation. Uh, two players left on the B site. Um, equally dangerous places to go if you're Astralis. Nitro's here retaining the op on that side of the map. And you can tell the bomb kind of equidistant from all of the T's that they don't have an intention of picking a site right away. Instead, they'll let the clock bleed down, try to get some more information if it's there. And you know, there's potential for maybe Glaive to get opt, but that kill is going to stir up the CTs quite drastically. A little bit of transition here to this A site. Glaive rounds that corner. He's in a world of hurt, but he will be caught regardless. Comes out from the alternate entrance. And it's Dupree to activate down towards the B site. Now Elyse is looking to make a play as he contests Connector. This is going to allow for Nitro and Twist to go down from the A site towards B. But when that door gets swung wide, Astralis will know there's a man hot on their heels. Sound cues there for them, and Device nails the headshot. Excellently done. Once more, pushing Team Liquid into a disadvantageous 2v4 with the plant on B. This is a spitting image as to what we saw in the previous round. Oh, and the result, just like Inferno, is a 5-0 start for Astralis, yeah. on fire as fast as can be. Absolutely. It looks, and it looks like Astralis are just a little bit sharper, like at every yeah. moment, right? They seemed a little bit more prepared. They seemed a little bit more deliberate at this moment. It's not looking like Dust 2 for me, and uh, I'm not sure why. Again, a map they left in them. They left here. They, they, they could have ended up on Dust 2 if they wanted to. They could have picked Mirage and floated it, almost certainly been able to play Dust 2 and ended on that map. But uh, maybe they were more confident about getting here in the first place with that first. But, uh, you know, Overpass is a map they're familiar with, a map that, again, as you mentioned, were able to take exactly. in a grand final versus Astralis in the past. But now is a map that clearly, and, and this is also, you know, not to discount Astralis, a map that for them was one of the hallmarks of, of their rise. You know, was was one of the maps that was like, all right, now they're becoming the best in the world. They've got overpass in spades. This was one of the original first maps that they were really good at. 
and um, and then that that map pool started to develop, and then Overpass got almost like left to the wayside somewhat, but actually now is ironically played more than ever because of the way that the bands go on their other two best maps. So five in a row here for Astralis. Full on by two ops in play, Stewie and Nitro. Oh, that was a chance. Glaive, he's not, he's not gonna be timid at all. Not even gonna play around with the timing. Just continues to hold W, trucks along to the top of the washrooms. See how you like kind of create this whirlpool effect. You run by them at long and suddenly the, the CTs have to react from within yep. this like fishbowl area that is the bathroom. And they have to give up all the map control that they didn't want to give away for free. You know, the reason you go for party early is to try and delay Astralis and taking the long section of the map and taking Connector and whatnot. But no, they're at the depths of the bathrooms just like they were in the round prior and all because Glaive sprints past. 100 meter dash. And that's not something you can simply react to and not make up for it in some other aspect. But it doesn't seem like they're getting friendly on short B or outside Monster as well. It's a lesser push spot, sure, but you've got to do something. Nitro here, spawning the left side of bathrooms. It's bomb trades hands. It's going to be a full exec, and it seems like they're going to commit to it as well. What's the response going to be for Liquid? Looks like they're going to put Nitro inside of the smokes. Got another man here with him. That's a liege floating around the dumpster. But I mean, this A site is just blanketed in these smoke grenades. Still, vision is to be had, but Nitro just caught awkwardly kind of hopping around on Optimus Prime. Now Elyse will take his place. Stands near in the corpse, no plant just yet, but the T's can't push past Dice Box. And oh my goodness, Elyse almost lines up so many bodies. Here comes Twist with another kill, and that flies close. Skewers the head of the first, nearly gets the next one, but it's Astralis with another round one. Back and forth engagement there on the bomb site. It got a little messy, honestly. The, uh, like, at the end, they almost clean it up. The twist gets that kill, the round is on for sure. But it does come down to the fact that Nitro threw a beautiful smoke. That was exact, it was timed perfectly with the smokes that Astralis threw. Meaning that once his smoke is up, so are theirs. But he doesn't trust it. He stands in their smoke on the edge of the truck, misses his jump a little bit, and then gets killed in transition. If he had held there in that spot and trusted his teammates to help him, as again, his and their smokes dissipated at the same time, Correct. and they could have just been comfortable. But instead, it looked like he felt like he was playing for himself, which is not right. He should have never been there if that were the case. 6-0 start, you know. This is stuff we expected to see on Inferno, not on Overpass. It will take, it will take more than just like a small comeback at this point. Um, they gotta get their head in the game. Confidence needs to be wow. right. They've gotta have trust. ADR near non-existent. Yeah, and NAF is somehow at 123 while everybody else has got failing grades. Pretty ridiculous stuff. There we go, though. Another buyback, at the least, for Liquid. Full round loss in effect. Got Glaive aggressively positioning himself on short, trying to get eyes into the B-bomb site. Obey. Oh, I was going to say Obey, oh, but, you know, that's a little personal. Free. Headshot on the retreat. He didn't want that fight. He didn't want to go down in that instance. He just wanted to get away with his life. He can't even have that. Zipex finds timing out Monster as well. Just continuing to clear out this B site with not even breaking a sweat so far. They are absolutely getting mauled at the moment. I mean, if, man, if this, it, like this B site is just getting torn apart player by player. From there, there's, some, there's an out with the short, the short play, but then at Monster as well. Seems like communication is slipping and they've got to really bring this back. If they push forward now, that's the best chance they have of winning the round. They have a flank coming in from behind, but not even. Not even. They both get gunned down by Magisk. Double taps just to be safe. And Astralis move on to 7-0. Push the aggression. You've been here before, you've been so good. They look super focused right yep. now. It seems like they can get away with anything. Um, and, and so, you know, and the other cool part is we just, we did see a full A exec that they attempted and were successful in winning as well. So it feels like they're gonna be a little bit more dynamic um, than they normally are, I suppose. They, they do a bully and abuse B quite often. Um, not to say they don't have any A stuff, but it's just a site that they have more of an affinity for device just in between Molotovs at the moment as he tries to get out to a default. The CTs have pushed up aggressively. It's always good to seek out these aggressive options. And unfortunately for them, it's only with pistols. And a couple grenades. That's responsible for dropping device down to 15. 
But I mean, Astralis, they're not going to linger. They're just going to immediately head the other direction, challenge the B bomb site, of which is nearly unoccupied. Nitro has just fallen down from heaven, and Stewie plays back by Graffiti. The Team Liquid players that were aggressive on A are doubling back to their spawn and hoping to get into position in time. But it was with pistols that Liquid kicked off their somewhat of a comeback on Inferno. Can they do it yet again? Twists and Nitro have picked up kills apiece, but it seems to be falling short. It's at this point their luck goes dry. The damage so substantial. 30 health between Magisk and Device. Nafly's Deagle will have to be magical if he's going to pull out this 1v3. This isn't a rivalry. You know what? This is a rivalry if they lose. But if they don't lose, if they lose with no integrity, if they if they lose yeah. this map and get stomped, right? And what is that? You know, it's it it, it 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 only confirms people's suspicions and what they already are. It's Liquid who have the thing to prove. It's not Astralis. Yeah. And I think that, I believe it was Maniac who said this earlier this weekend, and, and this it's just resonating with me because I feel like it's so true. This is this is the statement you can make after seeing Astralis this weekend. They flex, but they don't break. For sure. So, Very good point. same instance. You know, you've got that Dust2 victory to begin the series. I don't know how much momentum is going to make a difference, but in the I by Power Masters, we had the first map picked up by Astralis, map 2 won by Liquid, and then they use that to 16-11 both the second and third map. We have a very convincing uh, and almost disabling Inferno loss in the middle of all this, and an Astralis that has not cooled down at all. Mm -hmm. You know, they are still quite literally on fire. Absolutely. So here we have it. Another buy up. Two ops in play. Three augs this time. Look, we can use one of those aggressive options like they did on that eco previously. Getting getting towards party control, getting uh, getting up towards fountain. It's a bit risky. Something you should probably do like maybe three times a half, if that. But something that you absolutely need to test. Interesting to have Nitro jump up on the garbage, but here just to spot the cross to Long, a position that Glaive got away, or got away with earlier. And Elysia's here also to, to meet him halfway. Maybe attention gets taken away, and then he comes in for the final blow. But as those players fall off party, you'll see Elysia feels the, the need to do so too. Nitro smoked off. He's lost all his lines of vision. I mean, Astralis have been so successful in pushing Team Liquid back without having to necessarily kill them. Yeah, look how carefully they position themselves just on the on the mini-map, staying side by side. So they never really have to worry about someone's back. Someone never overextends at a different time. They're taking bathrooms control meticulously here, working together as a unit. Leave. A tick of the molly damage just a, is just enough to alarm Glaive. And Glaive goes ahead and takes him for free. Not even a chance to shoot while standing still. The beauty of that, Glaive puts the molly to the left and sprays through smoke so that if Elise had run forward, like you see, he goes right into a spray down of bullets. So just predicted the aggression. Puts this back into even ground. Four versus four once more. Astralis going to be emphasizing Monster on this B push. 30 seconds to do so. And we've had Team Liquid patiently sitting in this bomb site since the beginning of the round. They deterred them from A successfully. Now it's up to the B-hold to come through, and O has it ever. Four kills immediately between Twists and Stewie. That's what they needed to get on the board. Finally, their first round is up there. We'll have at it then. They do it. It isn't versus the maximum amount of utility like we're used to seeing Astralis come at B with. You know, full force, set execute, lots of flashes. Instead, it's this it's this slow pour. It's, it's a slow pour led by one player, initiated by one, followed up by three more, and they stand strong. The first kill goes their way. Every other kill goes in tandem with Stewie, then, then Twist, and back. It works out beautifully, exactly how a hold should look, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what now is the play for Astralis. They're like, this is almost a bonus for them. They get to see, like, oh, what can Liquid stop, right? They can get experimental, and that's what we saw. Are they going to try it again? Probably not the same thing. So what's the variation they'll employ, and how will Liquid deal with it? It's a pause called at the moment, so they can kind of go back to the go back to the black book and see exactly what's happening. It's actually uh, once again Dupree's mouse. Actually, so yeah, yeah. less less climactic to, uh, to be honest, but um, he's got to get that replaced, fixed, and sorted. There's a lot of data to look at uh, in the maps in the match so far. Uh, I think the part of it is. You just see a, la a lack of stability from Liquid. You see a lack of confidence in their own play and positions. Um, you see just like not a lack of attentiveness, but trust in their teammates. You know, 
thinking about Nitro's round, thinking about Stewie kind of playing for himself, moving off the barrels, thinking about Nitro holding an angle, throwing a great smoke in a perfect position, and then everybody thinking when they're seeing that, like, perfect, just stay there, yeah. you know? But then moving, not trusting his teammates. And you have to wonder, why is that all falling apart? Is that because of the thought of, or, or just thinking about Inferno? Is it because they were actually very confident moving into this best of three, and as soon as things started to not go their way, and they thought about doing a repeat performance, that the pressure mounted and became too great? It's impossible for us to say from the outside. All we can see is how they're reacting. Yep. And it should be worrying. And the, and the score line represents it. Eight to, eight to one right now for Astralis. Keeping spirits high is going to be extremely important. You just want to stay focused. You, know, you finally get around on the board. Yeah. Tech pause follows suit. And we're back into the game. Let's do this. There's two snipers that were a key piece of liquid success in the previous round. Still a part of the puzzle here in number 10. This half is not too far gone, but liquid, they can't just, you know, fizzle out and get three or four. You know, I want a convincing no. turnaround here and now. No, extra carbonation in yes. the liquid, you know? I want them to be fizzier than ever. So, again, they're looking for the two in a row, just before that pause. Pop shot goes wide, and Alige can't get away with that. He does survive with health, trades off to Nitro, so it was just a spawn-based play. So what's the readjustment? Sometimes teams will go for these aggressive options, but don't have a fallback plan. Here, Alige tries to make his way to long, but the flash is too perfect. It's almost four seconds that he's just sitting there, completely white. Now, Nitro, can he make up for it? He gets first one. one. But Magic there trades straight away. And that's just, uh, you know, evidence of Astralis' positioning. The trade frag potential, side-by-side -side play. Continuous pressure towards this A site. Yeah, they just, they, they've opened the floodgates, right? They know the two forward A players, the most difficult to find and hardest to kill and most dangerous and round-destroying players are gone. Going to the site, you've got a dice box. You've got Optimus, you've got Bank. These spots suck. They're happy to come into this. 100%, especially when they've got utility coupled with it. They just put flames all over the place. Smoke at the feet of Twist gives him an angle to work with. That's his own flash high. Nap gets the kill and matches blind. But how much more? Two versus two, 30 seconds up. And both the CTs shoulder to shoulder towards Dumpster now. Twist with another kill. Almost gets it done, but trade frags slightly to the favor of Astralis. Only one survivor in the form of device, and he'll happily give Astralis nine. In a very, in a very, in a, in a very similar version of Counter Strike, very close to this one, that would have been a game destroying round, right? Correct. One to nine or one to eight, excuse me. Yep. The reset, the triple, the double eco on top of this, three for one round. Um, so you know, I guess it, it, it keeps the lifeblood and liquid that they need. Uh, and, and the, the comeback mechanic might help them out, but honestly, their problems are far greater than that. That was another close shave. It was close. Um, but their problems started halfway through that round, and now it's a fast B play they've got to defend against. Yeah, they're just going to charge inwards. Stewie's good for two, but both him and Twist do fall. And then Nafly fumbles. Tries to get into the equation by pushing through short, and he's caught off by Glaive. Bomb plant in the midst. Nitro and Elise rotating down from the A site. Got Liquid at a massive disadvantage. Smoke refurbished in heaven. Elige has to activate. Comes off graffiti. Needs to clear close, because that's where Zipix is at. Even has a teammate to distract. The shadow gives way. Makes it all the easier for Zip to go ham. Hammers down the final two frags and gives Astralis double digits. 10-1 to the T side. This is world-class counter strike. Absolutely. I mean, abusing, I mean, it was simple B-Rush, you know? They, they got in fast, they stayed together. They made sure to never stop. They, I think, uh, abused the fact that Liquid might be hoping they'd have time to set up and think about how to react. Just got in front of all of that and knew that Liquid, because they lost that round, might be low on some nades. So if you're gonna pepper in a monster rush, that'll be the round to do it. Um, perfect situation for them to go for it, and they end up following through. Ideally, and now it's a, it's a pistol round. It's somewhat of a half buy. Some nade damage goes both ways. The T's have made a lot of presence, but the CTs have also made their own noise. And they know this player got run boosted over. Zipex ready for it. Easy pinch as Astralis come flying up short. Easy round, seeing as Liquid you know, plays off sidearms only. Not even finding a single kill. 
This three-man squad will work their way towards Connector, where Strauss will be happy to do it. Come fight. What's wild as well is that when, when we had Liquid pick up Overpass, you know, in the series that they won it, it was off of 10 CT rounds to close the game. Right. You know, they played 12 CT rounds, Liquid, and they won 10 of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the other way around here. Yeah, no, definitely their good side. Meant to be at least. And it's not like Astralis are going to be unhappy to play CT either. Round 12 comes to a close. Astralis, five alive on the anti-eco. Three players save these upgraded pistols for whatever that's worth. Liquid don't care. They're going to be looking to put rounds on the board, period. There's nothing else in store for them that's going to... That's going to merit any kind of happiness apart from simply winning rounds at this point so good utility damage oh like a nice play a nice 2k a cool deagle shot who cares none of that matters they'll at least have better guns here to support them in that endeavor they can do two ops again i can think of like a multitude of ct aggressive options that they could probably use like one of those is just a short push that they, they could use to defend against in Monster Rush, for example. You know, mollying the short tunnel, flashing off of the off the B post, and then uh, and then peeking in front of it to try to get that kill to... And then if it is a Monster Rush, to be able to sit there, hold for rotates down the stairs, have them escorted out of the door, and just be fast to be able to get back into the site because it feels like their B holds fall apart. So maybe try fighting from a periphery, you know, instead of fighting from within the site, dedicating players to the site, think about a retake. It's especially strong when you hold one of the best after plant spots, which, which is short B. And apart from that, again, working on Fountain. They tried it. It didn't work out so well. There's still new looks they could give it, but anything else to keep it fresh and aggressive. Long seems to be their target this round, but how much further do they go? I mean, there's already pressure, heavy pressure, being applied to the bathrooms, and yet still Liquid have not moved off long. Nobody's coming to help out this one single player in Nafly. So he feels the heat, literally. Fire at his feet, and a bullet between the eyes opens up this A site. At this point, finally, Liquid have to give up their long positioning. Elige doubling back as Twists catches a kill on B. But does he anticipate two more players, Bomb included? No. Blindsided by Magisk, who creates space to walk up, but Stewie, well, he topples him down. And a Molotov prevents any more hyper-aggression here from Stu. Rotates all over the place. Not only a liege coming down from CT spawn, but we've got Nitro behind the terrorists. And then we have Dupree behind the CT. So two flanks to activate, one of which unsuccessful. Astralis catches eyes behind, leaves Dupree to do work, and should very well be giving Astralis a 12th round. Yeah, you would definitely think so. It's no man's land for the CTs, and they are so unaware of the potential threat for this big rotate to come through. 29 seconds as the bomb is making its way over. Dupree can now release his utility, take control of one of the choke points, and force his CTs to respond. He doesn't have to make any more movements beyond this. Elise won't walk into his crosshair, but also get the better of him. The all doing him much of a favor. Leaving Stewie with an op and CT spawn. Aliyah quite low, but still capable. And there is a piece of utility there in, a, in the form of a smoke in Aliyah's hands, but no kit. No kit. Uh, that, that just spells disaster. The voice and Zipex both ready. Scopes up. Prepared. There's the first one. Connects immediately. Aliyah, nice little flick. A slight readjustment gets the kill, but a slight bit of time is all he had left. So no defuse, as said. That kit, a very real issue. Yeah, really nicely played from Device. Easy shot for him. Makes it look so simple, and that's honestly part of the reason he doesn't get the respect he deserves. You know, people, it's it's not as if he's like underappreciated in some extent, but for how good he is, how much impact he is, how many how many accolades he has, like in a sense he is, right? He just, uh, it, it, he's overshadowed. Obviously, because his teammates are so good, and that's the, Poke point of the uh, annoying conversation all the time, but clearly, I mean, it's there's nobody in the driver's seat with the op that's more capable than him for his team, right? That's not, yeah. you can't just replace him with some other person, and I think that's the most important part to remember. Though, even though some would argue that, it sounds ridiculous to me. It's it's a it's a round now where at least at least hangs on to that aug. But if we look at the last few moments of that uh, post plant, 
they threw a smoke down, and then they had the two players come in, Elise and Stewie. They didn't have time to defuse, even when that smoke went down. No, you're Literally, right. no point in even Stewie dying. So at some point, they just are not talking to each other, or this is like despondent in, in some way. Uh, but there, there appears to be kind of a, a gap in, in that. And it maybe it's, I mean, you can't even blame a team for being tilted or, or, or feeling kind of lost in a scoreline like this. But, but ultimately, that's, that's just a, another bad sign to tally on with the other ones that we've seen so far. Shrawl is just making them squirm at the moment. You can see Liquid trying to shift up their setup within B. Very much the target of Astralis here in the 14th round. Taking their time to pull the trigger on this one. Potential for a flank is there. Dupree knows it. He's that sole connector player. The entirety of Astralis, other than him, are here on Monster. The utility flies over. The push begins. Up close, we'll have the pistols. Nitro, first to fall. Magisk with a team kill, but it's okay because the kill feed's just entirely filled with Astralis through and through. Stu, up close but not yet gonna have an angle. Could activate now with a liege in unison. However, it is just a liege left over. He has dropped bomb, 10 seconds up, but Astralis continue and continue and continue to just outclass Liquid here on overpass. 13 to one. I mean, Mohan, give him a chance. What other way is there to look at it? I mean, they're just feeding him and feeding him and feeding him. You know, they just, there's just no chance. Getting some kind of sick pleasure out of that. Yeah, it's like watching a car crash. I mean, and you know, you just can't look away. Yeah, you can't look away. Um, and you know, there's still there's still a whole second half. The problem is just like everything in terms of results is counting against them. Never had a scoreline this big to come against, back against uh, the, the last map of a final. The fact that Liquid's CT side was their good side. The fact that the Straws are going to love to play their CT side. It'd take more than a miracle. And also an opening kill in the last round of a half. So looking for two now or Liquid to at least retain some dignity. Opening kill goes their way, but that that just pushes Zipix into just an accelerated execute on the B site. Smoke goes down, Stewie's in the back of hit. They pretty much know exactly where each other are. It's just a matter of can they do anything about it. And who's here to help? It's Elysian. So far, Liquid still stand tall, but down goes Stewie. Collapses inside the water, a leash charging forward with a teammate just by his side. That is going to be Twists working with him, and both of which cleared out by Glaive and Debris. Together, they've got this round through and through, but there's a flank from Nitro, a big flank from Nitro. Bomb's not planted, and Glaive's made a lot of sound, so that's an easy read. Now the bomb falls into his lap, and he has a massive health advantage. Doubling the rounds to two doesn't seem like a big deal, but it gives them that much more space to wiggle with. It's not over, though. Interesting. Just expelling a lot of the ammo there. Assuming he's not going to get peaked. This angle will be crept upon. And will the shoulder oh. peak be good enough? It is. He does get the second round. And that's something. You know, that is something. Something more than nothing. Two rounds for Liquid on a CT side that they were meant to take control of. But I feel like they couldn't even get their hands on Astralis. No. They came flying out of the gates on that T side. And it was dynamic. You know, it started with a bunch of B hits. We had these, these full set piece smoke executes on A. And mid rounds over and over where Astralis just seemed to outclass them. So Liquid, they will be switching over to the offense. But they will be switching over with a limp and a daunting task ahead. They sure as hell need this pistol. Let's see what they decide to do for this pistol. The final pistol of the series here at, at uh, Blast Sao Paulo. They've got uh, the first blast of 2019, and it has been a stellar one so far, and a stellar shot from Zipix. A two-piece combined with devices, headshot, and also the rotate in. Three players in the sight to all be there as second and third tier lines of defense. 14th round for Astralis, you think Nitro going to get pressured and Astralis, they're not going to let off this pedal. They are charging through the walls. And just to reiterate what Spun said, you know, if there is another year of Astralis as the best team in the world and no one can keep up, good. Yeah. If that team, team can exist, then that team should, should exist. exist. Absolutely. Let this be the testament that is Astralis. Not just a Counter-Strike team, but a Counter-Strike project. And a project that has worked so well. Two Blast Pro Series championships in their back pocket during 2018. Looking to kick off a hell of a circuit this year with a win as well, and a convincing one at that. 
two scouts and upgraded pistols for Liquid to try and get something rolling. But it just doesn't seem to be piecing itself together. Astralis will give them nothing to work with. In fact, they'll take away the little that they have. Already, a T hits the dirt, and now a second on top of it. Dupree looking for an enemy, and he'll find one. An instant dink as the MP9 rides up his body. Dominating spray from him, and that finds a small pixel to work with. We'll have to zoom in a bit further, Can't but that's not enough versus Yogg of Magisk. Nitro will come in finally, but now he's left in a 1v4, and the MP9 rings off for one of the last times potentially in this game. It's match points, and Astralis are up 15-2. 13 map, match, and championship points here in Brazil. I mean, again, they bend, but they don't break. Astralis off the back of a round, a map one loss. Keep it composed and keep it convincing. That's what you like to see. Team Liquid just deflated, dilapidated at this point. With some upgraded pistols and utility, they'll try what they can, but they have been out of this map, they've been out of this series since we begun Inferno. Masterclass performance from the Danes. Possibly one last round to stick a fork in it. There's the first one. And disadvantage to even play off of. I mean, if you could have anything going for you, there's nothing at all. I'll take one last stand here on short B. Little utility, upgraded pistols. Got presence in stairs, one outside monster, but there's not a push to come their way. No, they'll have to force their way in with CTs who are prepared. This one position behind the sandbags could catch them off guard. Yes, Ooh, almost a liege, nearly doubling down onto Dupree. We got that last bit of utility chucked up and over. Debris looks to lock down the defense. Zipex spraying the Fomus, catches two bodies. It is just Naf. Naf and Naf alone, and down he goes. There you have it, folks. Astralis 16 2, an overpass victory in the most convincing of fashions, and a tournament 